<laughs> All right, hey guys, I'm Eric, and uh, this is Sam, um, aka Nevlin 2.0. <laughs> and let's say it. First off, folks, this is not my original voice. My voice is this. It's nice to meet you guys. All right, so here's what we do. <clears throat> We decided to make this specific channel only specifically talking about topics, Adult Swim, Toonami, stuff like that, anime, basically. Basically what we know as our own individual fans of <clears throat> such genre as well. That's this right. is what we do. We love doing it. But – and if you're wondering, yes, we have real jobs, which, by the way, are classified <laughs> because, you know, the internet – but what can you possibly do? I mean, the world's crazy. Yet, it's a lovely place. <laughs> and what I mean by lovely right now is that everyone's at home safe from the um, – let's see. We can't really – I don't know or remember if we can't talk about it because we could get demonetized for mentioning it. The um, I'll, I'll call it the pandemic, but let's call it this. I'll call it the, um, the uncomfortable Barney birthday surprise. <laughs> no, 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 too much. Okay, how about uh, Barney's surprise birthday party? How about that one? <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that one. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's a, <clears throat> probably a better way for to disguise the actual situation going on at hand. All right. So again, what we do <laughs> is that we talk about topics, anything of interest. And yeah. So basically, <laughs> like, uh, you know, this uh, what we're calling this. Our channel name is uh, the Cauldron of Interest. And basically what this is called is essentially the uh, the Stew of Enlightenment podcast, okay, which is, you know... Basically... Wait, I thought we were going to call it Stew of the Week. Wouldn't that make more sense? Well, let's put it this way. It's just a working title right now. We don't know exactly which one it'll be yet, I guess. We'll have to talk about You know about what? That. I have an idea. How about we have people in the comments vote on either Stew of the Week or Stew of Enlightenment? You think that's a good idea? Sure. That sounds like a good idea. So I guess yeah, you hear us, that, folks? Just put that under the comments good, below. Uh, this is You'll... a good way for us to get the community involved, I guess, right off the bat. You know, if you, you guys tell us which one you uh, like better, the stew, of, the stew of the Week or the Stew of Enlightenment. Yeah, you know, I don't even know if we even have a community yet, do we? <laughs> well, we're going to as soon as this video uploads, hopefully. A small one, probably. Well, like, maybe, know that. maybe have one person if we're lucky. <laughs> yeah that one person's like i like this this is beautiful <laughs> this communicate with my social skills oh my god <clears throat> like speaking of social skills i think that this whole party surprise birthday party is definitely going to cause a lot of problems like with socializing because it's like like even after this whole thing is like completely over and it does suck yeah people are probably going to be like, where am I? <laughs> what What is this place? I've been gone for so long. Dude, it's been like literally almost a year. Really? Oh my god. I missed my son's birthday party. How? I'm divorced. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, but seriously, so the divorce is not a funny joke. I mean, it is. I don't know. It, it's weird. Yeah. But... At the same time, it's like, my God, how can you possibly, possibly just, like, stay in your home and be like, everything's going to be fine. We're all going to survive. We can do this. <laughs> Social distancing 101. Social distancing 2020. Yeah. Shit, fuck that up. I'll let me Social distancing 2020. There we go. Because, my God, it's, like... I mean, it is starting to wear on me a little bit, like... You know, like, yeah. at first it was fine, like, I'm like, alright, no big deal, like, I don't know how long this is really gonna go on for, but, like, you know, I'll just spend a few weeks at home and probably like, pass over, but then it's, like, we're sitting here for months on end now, but... I even spoke to, like, a hospital a little bit ago, like, I was there v visiting somebody, and... They told me, like, this whole – I told them how crazy this whole thing was, and one person said, we are still working on the vaccine right now, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're still working on it until trying to make it work. Right. But whatever the case, I 
I do believe we'll get past this. I just hope to God it'll be sooner because uh, where I am right now, hopefully I can start working at my job at a restaurant. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what I do. I'm just a dishwasher. That's it. <laughs> who loves to draw, who loves to animate, who loves to right. make games, but who apparently is not really good at it right now, but eventually will be. True, but I, well, I'm not great. I have to be good I mean, at it. And just keep we, there's always room for improvement, but of course we're, I mean, I would say you're pretty good at it though, dude. Like you shouldn't worry so much. Okay. But, so, but anyway, yeah, we, I guess we can give them a little bit of a brief history, I guess, like about us. Like, so basically, you know, we're both actually friends in real life. You know, we didn't just like meet on the internet or anything. Oh, of course uh, not, because who the hell does that? Craigslist. <laughs> Let's face yeah. it, Craigslist is like the ultimate reason why ra- random people are just like, so we'll get together later. All right, we'll do this. We got a few seconds later, we have got nothing in common. We're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like we both, uh, we pretty much met through a common friend actually that, you know, because um, we both, we go to the same school and everything. And, um, you know, he was pretty much the one who uh, kind of invited us to this game project that we're kind of, uh, you know, working on. And, you know, eventually we'll try and release it if we can. But, uh, you know, that's how we pretty much met each other. Uh, probably about, what was it now? Like, probably like last summer, I think. I think it was almost. Wait, no, hold on. We met in 2018, didn't we? Or was it 2019? No, it had to be sometime in 2018. I don't know if it was 2018 if or if it was 2019 in the summer, but it was definitely in the summer. Like it was, it was around like June or something when we started having those meetings. Remember? Yeah, it was the time when Michael wanted us to try. Oh, by we have a friend named Michael who wants us to make a game for him someday, which we <laughs> plan to do so. I yeah. still want to be dedicated to this project, <sighs> mm-hmm. but first, Papa gotta graduate. Yeah, because we're both actually like you know studying like game design too. You know that's pretty useful to tell them, I guess. Yeah, and that's the thing too, yeah, though. Like, even what, if they're probably thinking like, what kind of games are these guys talking about? Like, I'm assuming video games, but what if we weren't? You know, what if we were board game designers? <laughs> I mean, is that a game designer in general? I mean, wouldn't they be making all except that? I mean, come on, let's face it. There's like classes that teach you how to make like. Four games and card games, for Christ's right. sake. I know. Like that whole class that class just to even get to the next level. That's ridiculous. Yeah. But I still I mean, did. Like, as for our current situations, like that's that's pretty much the extent of like what we're our situations right now. Besides like this whole pandemic situation that we kind of talked about, but you know we're basically just you know trying to get our degrees right now. So. Yeah, and I'm still hoping that I can work at my job. Right. While receiving, <coughs> I think, some unemployment. I don't remember. Like, that's the thing, though. Mm-hmm. But uh, if I do, then uh, hallelujah, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm i not very religious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But 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 in all seriousness though, um, let's see. What should we talk about? Ah, I know just what to talk about first. Okay, now I know we are game designers, but I plan to become an animator after my game design degree. Right. I want to discuss with. Let's see. There were a few things I looked into. Like. Let me think. There were some pieces of animation I looked into a while ago that um, I basically, let's see, there's um, there's Gene Javosky's uh, Samurai Jack Season 5. Very outstanding work of art. Very lovely. The ending, I feel, was a little bit um, like off but not really quite so because with every samurai jack ending there is hope but at the same time there's just no like end to jack like having lost a victory you know what i mean yeah and i think in the weird way what they did with um with um oh my god i 
can't believe I actually forgot her name. Ashi. That was it. Ashi. Ashi basically just, you know, wait, Eric, have you seen this? What? Samurai Jack? Like the new ones? Yeah, season five. Have you? No, no, I haven't seen any of the new stuff yet, really. I've seen, I've seen like maybe a few episodes, I think, actually. Then why are you letting me talk about it if you haven't seen it? I don't know. I didn't think you were going to talk about it that much. Oh. I mean, you can you can talk about it. Just don't spoil it, I guess. Like, Well, I'm not going to spoil it. I will shut my mouth right up right now. Let's see. Let's work <laughs> on something else. Let's, let's move on from that. Dang. Um, <coughs> crap. Man, we are really blowing this, aren't we? <laughs> At least I feel no, that. I'm not blowing it. I mean... I mean, this is what my else, first time. What else about I, the situations should we talk about? Well, the situations I can think of are animation. Um, God. Um, mm, I, okay, I know one. I, I do remember showing you. Mm, hmm? No, I was just gonna say. I guess that's something we can address right now. Is like. You know, since this is going to be like a really long podcast, you know, we're pretty much just two guys doing this for fun right now. So this is pretty much like our hobby at this point. But um, yeah, I mean, like, since we're aiming for like, you know, a four hour podcast each week, you know, that's the thing we're trying to actually aim for is, you know, a weekly podcast. And, you know, since it's going to be like about four hours each week or something like that. You know, I mean, we or two, but it depends talk. on the day, huh? Or two hours, but it depends on the actual day that we still record. Yeah, exactly. Like it, it, it'll probably range from like two to four hours, something around there. But since it's kind of longer, like, you know, there's definitely gonna be like, uh, you know, some silences here and there and stuff like that, because you know we can't always uh, think about something right away. So we're that's why we, even though we have these um topics that we've selected beforehand to talk about you know uh sometimes we'll come up with stuff uh you know stuff off the top of our heads and stuff too so yeah because i can imagine like somebody just like i don't know why i'm imagining this but i can imagine someone in the comments just typing like think think what you're saying (laughs) give me more speech i demand more verbal content (laughs) i'm typing away (laughs) just like in general yeah. Okay, let's see. Um, you know what? Favorite animations. Let's do that first. Okay, Eric, what was one of your favorite animations you grew up as a kid? Anything. And no. Wow. Billy Mandy don't count. I mean, they do count, just not right now, because that's er- almost everybody's favorite at this point. I mean, there's all kinds of different, like, favorite animations I have as a kid, but, you know, like, I guess probably some of the most nostalgic ones that I think of are, like... You know, stuff like, um, you know, of course, like, classic Disney movies, like, say, like, Hercules or something, but also, like, maybe, like, Kiki's Delivery Service is another big one. Like, I just remember watching a lot of those as a kid, so. Mm. That was a damn good movie, too. Mm-hmm. <sighs> um. But, yeah, we're trying to pace ourselves here so we, uh, you know, have a decent amount of time to talk for each one. So, you know, we're about um, halfway through the first, uh, the very first topic. Then we'll start talking about our second one, kind of. And, um, and to be fair, unprofessionally, I am eating, like, crackers right now. <laughs> Lots of salt. It doesn't there. matter. No one's going to know that. Well, I they do now. I told them. <laughs> yeah, I know, but like they wouldn't know if you didn't tell them. Uh, what matter. does that matter anyway? I mean, it's not like we we have a no food rule. That's fair. That is <laughs> absolutely fair. <laughs> There'll be no. I remember, some people like to wonder what sounds that we're making, especially when we're eating. It's like I'm just eating a chip. There's <laughs> nothing more simple than that. <laughs> okay, so anything specific, like. Like, any specific type of show uh, involving animation you remember growing up as a kid, besides Hercules and besides classic Disney movies, like, a show. Oh, a TV like, show? Yeah, anything like that, yeah. Anything on the top of your head. Dude, like, there's so many, like... I mean... Well, that was the thing, is, like... You know, I didn't even have cable as a kid growing up. 
Oh, Jesus. So, like, I couldn't even really, uh, you know, I, I always had to rely on, like, these, like, public programming TV shows. Yeah, and funny enough, I... Like, okay, okay, here's one. I just thought of something, right? Mm-hmm. Go ahead, you can say it if you wanted to. No, no, go, no, you, you were okay, going to finish. So, like, right? you know, since I didn't have any, like, um, you know, cable or anything, like, I never watched anything really as, like... And this is, like, talking as, like, a young kid, like, probably before age, like, before age, like, 10, probably, right? You know, I didn't have cable any time before then, or the internet. So, I would always have to rely on, like, watching, like, public broadcasting. So, basically, that would mean, like, you know, there would be, like, you know, the basic channels, like, ABC and, like, PBS and stuff like that, right? That's pretty much all you got. Like, you got, like, 10 channels only about. So, yeah, the boring shit. Yeah, but the thing is, like, there was never anything good on during the day, really. So, you know, I would always be playing, like, probably video games a lot of the time. Or, you know, and, and the shows I did watch, I'd probably, uh, like, rent them or something. Uh, like, you know, I remember always renting, like, like stuff like Sailor Moon and stuff at, like, Blockbuster. But, like, then, um, you know, my mom would always rent that. And, of course, I had a ton of, like, VHS tapes that I would watch, too. But, yeah, it's funny. Like, kind of the same thing with me a little bit, yeah. But, uh, and that was pretty much part of the entertainment. But as for TV, though, like, I would usually rely on, like, say, like, Saturday morning cartoons. Because, mm. they like, ABC had this thing called, like, ABC's One Saturday Morning. <gasps> yes! You remember that thing? I don't remember seeing it all the time, because when I was a kid, I did have cable a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you remember that little intro and everything they had for it? Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the weird like, little uh, edited cutouts, like, this one was like, Hello. I'm like, what the <laughs> hell was that all about? Yeah, like, they have, like, that little, like, uh, you know, like, that singer and everything. She's, like, singing the chant or whatever for the, <laughs> the thing. Yeah, but... And then it would show, like, that, that freaking, like, city or whatever. <laughs> But yeah, like yeah. they had they had a lot of good shows on that. Like I think they would play stuff like Recess. You know, of course Recess. Oh my god, that's when I first saw I think that's when I remember first seeing Recess, like ever, yeah. but not really paying attention to it. Like I've seen it. But when I was young when I was a kid in my younger days, I barely paid attention. I was like, This looks amazing, but what is this? It's, it's like a how how can I not possibly remember what the show was? Yeah. Like, I remember some of, like, like some of the episodes, like, where TJ was, like, trying to get a bet, win a bet to go to the movies to see an awesome action hero called um, Super El Toro, I think. It was, like, a superhero who looks like a, a luch- like a, like a bullfighter, basically, in Mexico. I was like, yeah, hmm, that's a pretty cool design. Right. And it turns out the principal had the exact same fan base as the one of the main characters, TJ. I was like, a principal having something in common with children? What is this beauty? And yet this very strange social consciousness <laughs> that people say, oh, get, our generation of adults can never possibly have something in common. That's just, oh, wow. <laughs> we have something in common. Right. Superheroes. That's, as the kids would say, <laughs> mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's here's another one too. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the show called like Bobby's World? Yes. <laughs> here's the problem though. I'm, I only like, I'm had... thinking really deep here. Like, yeah, that's like really old. Like that was, I mean, yeah, that was probably one of the first ones I watched. Probably too. You know that that was a great show though. And that's the thing, though. I only remember having only in a VHS set, and that's all I watched from it. Mm-hmm. I never saw any other episodes of Bob, Bobby's where I was like, I feel like there's more, but yet there's nothing here. What Dude, would I do? I still, I literally still have, like, some of the toys, some of the old Happy Meal toys for that thing. You lucky son of a bitch. <laughs> you. I'll show them to you if I can uh, dig them up, like. Sure, why not? Yeah, like. But hey, we gotta wait for uh, Barney to blow out his candles first. You know what that means. Barney? I Remember I told you I wasn't gonna call it what it was? I was gonna say it was Barney's birthday surprise? Oh, right. 
That's that's just gonna keep flying right by you, isn't it? <laughs> it's okay, buddy. I get it, man. I mean, I don't know. It's it's very interesting on how you can um compare <laughs> something like that. That was another one too, I guess. Um, you know, actual Barney the show. Yeah, that creepy fucking dinosaur with those soulless black people eyes. But dude, here's the crazy part, right? It's like, I remember, I have this memory, like, uh, do you remember, like, the Barney movie that came out? I don't think I did, and I don't think I want to. (laughs) Dude, it was, uh, here's the craziest thing, right? It's like, it's a really funny story I have about that, right? Like, I went to go see that Barney movie. Why? You know, because I was a little kid, right? Oh, yeah. I really wanted to see it. Like, I was probably, like, probably, like, four or, like, five years old or something like that. So Me? I, went to go see I was my terrified mom. of the fucker. Huh? I was terrified of the fucker. Really? And I just always found him annoying and inconsiderate. I was like, I love you. You love me. I was like, <laughs> no, I don't love you. I don't know you. Who are you? Get away from me. Right. But um, At least yeah, that's I went to go like I went to go see the movie with my mom or something like, and uh, I just had right. like this distinct memory where, you know, I went to go see the movie with her, and we went to the theater, and like, you know, I went, I, you know, I was doing fine at first, but then like, uh, you know, I just started getting like, I started feeling really sick, so I couldn't even like, I guess it was something I, <laughs> something I ate right. So I couldn't even sit through the entire movie and we actually had to leave halfway through it because I literally just went to the bathroom and like just puked up a whole bunch of stuff. You must have seen some really dark shit in order for you to vomit like that. (laughs) So I just have like this distinct memory of like just throwing up in the bathroom. Like I remember the exact way that the bathroom looked in everything. Like it was like it had like this... It was a really nice bathroom, right? But it had this, like, crazy, like, yellow lighting or something. Yeah. These, like, these marble, these really nice marble, like, uh, you know, countertops for the the sink and everything, right? Right. It was probably one of the cleanest bathrooms I've ever seen in my life, actually. Until I threw up in the sink. (laughs) Yeah, that's the sad thing about the world, isn't it? People don't know what the heck they're doing anymore. Yeah. And my God, it had I, I, okay. I have probably like two theories. One, I think the movie was so bad that you basically threw up. Or, well, it wasn't the movie. Like, I loved the movie. I loved Barney at the time, so I really wanted to see it. That's why I was really mad that I couldn't see the rest of it. I was just feeling too sick, and I just had to. My mom just took me home. But um. Maybe that was God warning you. Be careful. Do not love this dinosaur. He is an abomination of God. <laughs> Thereby, abomination of me. It, it doesn't matter. Like I, I understand, man. Hey, you like what you like, buddy. Trust me. That's 100% giving you my 100% support. I just can't like di- Barney Dinosaur because I remember growing up at my point going like, this is stupid. I gotta go home. <laughs> oh, wait. I'm in this stupid freaking center place. Oh, well. I'll just have to wait for my mom to pick me up. This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But nevertheless, um, Jesus, like, okay, we were talking about um, animation as a kid. So anything that you remember watching, like, further on in your childhood, like Cow and Chicken or anything? You know, I've actually never seen that show, but um, my it God, pretty good actually. But okay, so like that was like the early childhood, right? So, oh yeah. You know, when I was actually like about ten or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. then it actually started getting better because I actually got cable and the internet, and that was around the time mm-hmm. around when the original uh, Nintendo DS came out, right? When you were ten. Yeah, like something like that, right? Like some, it was around that time period. Some around, maybe not ten, but somewhere around that age, right? You mean the Game Boy Advance, right? Because I was like, yeah, like I guess somewhat. Like I don't remember the exact year, but it was um, definitely around the time when 
you know, the original Nintendo DS came out. That's when I got it, pretty much. Yeah. The internet, the internet and cable, and uh, maybe a little bit before then, actually, though. But anyway, though, like that, that's when things started getting better. You know, I always knew about like SpongeBob and stuff, and like that was the thing is like I always yes. had to rely on like actual like seeing i always saw a cable and stuff at hotels you know i'd always go on vacation maybe every summer or something like that at least once right. to like you know like a you know just a park a th- an amusement park or something and then um you know their hotels would always be awesome because they would always have these you know awesome like game systems you could play or something in the hotel room hmm. and same with the cable but um yeah, like, I always saw, like, I always knew about the cable and, the, you know, like, stuff like Spongebob and Nickelodeon cartoons, but I never could watch them at home or anything. But then I finally could when I got cable, and it was, like, it was, like, the greatest thing ever, basically, because it was, like, you know, we got Comcast, and I was, like, this thing has a lot of channels, like, freaking, like, thousands of channels. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, there was, like a lot of struggle like when i was a kid i watched cartoon network i remember watching cartoon cartoon network first right at one point in my life then it was saturday morning cartoons as well but then out of nowhere i switched it from that to 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 nickelodeon like fast Really? I was like watching like Nickelodeon for like almost like I think two or three years. I mean, I was really young, so I don't remember like when. I think it was like around when I was like nine or ten. And my God, Jesus, Nickelodeon had some good shit. It still could have some good shit if they actually tried. Right. I mean, I checked out some episodes of Loud House and the Casa Grandes. That's pretty tolerable for me. I like it. It was really good. And that's like current right now as well. <laughs> yeah. But um nevertheless, um I don't know why, but I remembered liking the show called Doug, basically. Oh yeah, of course. I love Doug. Like that was one of the shows too that was on the one Saturday morning. I don't remember that being on there, but okay. Um And that's the thing too, like I realized that, I don't know, it was like looking at like something that was kind of boring, but kind of like intriguing at the same time. Like you can't help but be intrigued when you were a kid. Yeah, kind of watch I know what you mean. I still that's prefer Rugrats. Nice. Hmm? I still prefer Rugrats and the Wild Thornberries, but that's just about it. That was the other thing is like, uh, I played, um, you know, like I was big on the Game Boy Color you know, around those days. So I actually had, like, the Doug video game and everything, too. Right, right. It was a fun game, like, uh... But yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean, though. Yeah, that, too. Um... Let me think. Uh, there was something else. Um... Uh, let me think. Um, shit, what was I talking about? Oh, right, 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 Nickelodeon, okay. <laughs> like, my God, I already remembered growing up and looking at shows like, um, like I said, Rugrats and the Wild Thornberries, the Rugrats were on first. Oh, then later yeah, on, Rugrats. Yeah, that's the thing too. Like, what made the show amazing to me as a kid? Now that I realized it growing up, it wasn't the fact that they were just babies, like on their own adventures, like literally, surprisingly coming close to death. Because let's remember, Tommy almost died falling off a baseball stadium onto a player's glove. What? Are you serious? Mm-hmm. I don't remember that. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. I Actually, I can't believe I actually remember that. The, um, the Rugrats game for PS1, like, I had two of them. Uh, just the one called Rugrats, and then there was another mm-hmm. one called uh, Rugrats Search, or Rugrats Studio Tour. 
Dude, those were two of the most fun PlayStation 1 games I ever played. That's the thing, too. During my childhood, I never really... I, this is ironic. I really never played that much video games when I was a kid. Huh. Yeah, you're, look, you're talking to a guy who played Crash Bandicoot for, like, almost six to eight hours a day. Yeah. <sighs> oh, <laughs> dude. Okay, well, you want to know something crazy about that is... Uh, you're bringing up all these old memories I have, right? So, like... There was basically... Have you ever seen the movie Baby Geniuses? <laughs> the original one? <laughs> no? no? I don't remember seeing it, but I remember seeing some stuff. I don't want to go back to it. No. Dude, you should watch it. It's a great... I love that movie, but... That was an old movie I watched, too. Like, I saw the VHS tape for that, but... There was this part in it, right? And mm. there's, like... You know how, like, in old movies and stuff, sometimes they'll, like, do a thing where, like, they're showing the TV and, like, advertising a ga- uh, a movie or their kids playing a game or something on the TV? Mm. Well, that was, I believe there was one part in the movie where um, they actually showed Crash Bandicoot in it. Seriously? Yeah, like, there's this part where, like, you know, the, what's the character's, the kid's name is, like, Wit or something, right? Or they, I can't remember the two twins' names, but I think the main character's name was Wit, right? Or something like that? Well, anyway, he's like the main kid. Uh, at least the... I don't know if they... I can't really remember if they're like equally show the two kids or not, but like one of the babies, right? One of the twins, I think his name was Wit. He's like sitting there in the mall, right? Because he's stuck in the mall or something. And he's sitting there just playing like Crash Bandicoot. And you just see, like, Crash jump across the platforms. Mm. So, like, I honestly... It's actually interesting to think about that, because it's like... You know, that was such a different time period. It's like, you know, did they actually... um, You know, did Naughty Dog actually, like, pay them to put that in the game? Or do you think, like, that was just, like, a thing where, like, they filmed the game without their permission, kind of just filming the game because they wanted to see it or something. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, let me play that put in the audio. Hold on. <laughs> see? You've got to be kidding me. That's the exact scene. <laughs> My good lord. Yeah, good times. But alright, yeah, the next topic, I guess, I guess we can talk about a little bit about our job and work or something, or maybe what we hope to be doing, I guess. Um. Yeah, we're not gonna, like, mention anything, uh, anything crazy or whatever. Yeah, because, um, like, and funny enough, like, when we, um, when we actually have to, like, um, let's see, ah, I remember now, okay, when I remembered, like, at first, I wanted to be a writer when I was, like, in college. And I was, like, at a different campus. At the- right. It, um, I mean, I feel like it was a starting point for <sighs> introductions, if you will. Okay. When I first started, like, when I first started, the writing classes were perfect. They were fine, in my opinion. Yeah. But when it came to actually digital media and game design, it just... It just did, just did, did not work for me as much. Like, I feel like... Wait, what didn't work as much? What do you mean? Let me explain. Okay. During that time, I was mostly taking some animation classes. Except I only I only took one. Introduction animation out of nowhere. Okay. Like, it's one of those classes that's like, okay. Okay. I took drawing one, right? Yeah. But here's the thing. I didn't perfect my skills to keep drawing. Yeah. And it feels like when I took their course, it didn't give me enough experience 
to be like, okay, so I did the class. Now, apparently, I am able to just go to a different class that's involving animation without the requirements. Like, I didn't even have – I don't remember even having to do a portfolio review on that. I don't, I don't think. Right. I, it's been a while since I remembered, but looking back into it now, I felt like I was given a bit of a slap on the wrist, but like the teachers were still hardworking. They still believed in teaching people the necessary skills they need to learn in order to actually progress and further teach people how to do what we're trying to do as a living. Like, uh, for example, um, let me think. All right, let me think. Um, shit. Great, and I got sidetracked. Man, all right. Um, okay. Oh, right. I feel like when, when it comes to like learning how to do your craft, I meant at like um, at the current school that we have right now. So <sighs> I'm not going to give out that school detail. What about this current school that you're at? Like, what, what were you saying about it again? Had I been at that current school at like... 2016, things would have been completely different. I would have learned how animation and game design really worked. <laughs> because let me explain. So at a time in my life, I attended a school, which I'm not going to name. It was like, I'll basically say it like this. It was a community college, basically. Right. So I was learning how to, at first, be a writer. Then I immediately, like, I know how to write. I'm just not a professional writer or a comedic writer kind of stuff. Like, I mean, for God's sake, I'm not George R. R. Martin, for, for, God, for God's sake, or, um, <laughs> JK, or J.K. Rowling. Well, I would like to write stories in tech and in book format besides – draw and animate my stories as well. Uh, Speaking of which, the school had a course of digital media where you apparently were doing game design or like animation. I felt like their classes just, um, they were more like a good introduction of what you could learn from all this. Right. It did work at the regular college. You had to work more for yourself and you had to learn everything like honestly that, that that's just like the school that we go to currently which i'm not going to name <laughs> because i mean geez it's like it, it, it's hard to describe like compared to my old school or my my, my old college compared to, to this um school that we go to now mm. We we basically have to um like okay the first school I went to I was te- learning how to like I said on how to write I already mentioned that part I was learning how to do some game design but in reality I believe I was doing more animation tactics than anything okay. But there was one class where I literally got lucky and got a B in game design. Now, here's how it happened. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> there was this professor. Now, I'm not going to mention what he, do- what he did for a living, but he had knowledge on coding. Okay. But when I tried learning how to code from a tutorial video that was, like, really old at that time. Right. It was a... It was a 2D, it was a YX, it was a Y and X access 2D scroller game. Like you had to move around along with it. It was 3D. 
It involved this kid wearing pajamas for some reason, and he was shooting like nightmarish, like teddy bears and stuff to survive <laughs> in your night in your dreams. I fucked that code up. Right. Everything I thought was working properly wasn't. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm sure the video might not have been the best, though. Hmm. So it's probably not really all your fault. Like, and that's just the thing. Like, um... Like, and the, and the thing was, it felt like these classes were... Think of them like introduction classes if they were kind of, like, already, like, cutting to the chase of just, like, oh, here's the class. Here you go. Do it. Get out of my sight. Yeah. It wasn't that attitude, but the atmosphere felt that way. That's And I realized something, even then, had I... Because I will admit that I... Like, barely study because I didn't have much confidence in what I usually do. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing. I feel like it wasn't as involved in like teaching you everything else. Whereas our current, our current, um, our current school, it does teach you everything, and it gives you a more realistic view on what you have to do separately. Right. It's. It's like slower than my old campus, but at the same time, if you just pay attention, just look at the material, just practice the material, it gets better. Yeah, I see what you mean. And that's the thing, though. I like I'm still like studying on game design, despite the fact that I literally have like some crappy equipment right now. Like my equipment used to be real good like this computer i'm using right now for this um this podcast on my end it like shuts itself off it used to go like, it used to go like this but i think because yeah, it literally battery, just did shut itself off before we um not quite not shut itself like not like where the where you pull pull the pull the the, the cord and it goes like what happened was it first locks itself up right Mm. It puts itself, it locks itself up, and then it turns itself off, and that's due to like the motherboard being damaged from liquid damage. Luckily, though, I'm getting a new laptop this Friday, so I can continue doing my classes in the summer. Thankfully, yeah, I can't wait till you get it, dude. Like we've been, uh, you know, you've definitely been talking about getting one for a long time now, so it's it'll be good to have let you have. I'm trying one. to get like a special MSI laptop that's like worth like almost like a little bit past two grand, but let's be real, that's not gonna happen anytime soon, not yet. And I gotta save a lot of money for that, along with my tuition. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Okay. Also, let me think. Um, let me think. Um, shit, where was I? Oh, right, 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 right. Like, Go, going back into it, like, learning everything we can about, like, uh, game design and animation, like, at first, sorry, I got a little shot. At first, I didn't really know that I wanted to do this stuff until, like, two years ago, and I realized to myself, you know what? I got to make this work. I got to actually try. And yeah. that's the sad thing about trying to do like um, games and animation. You need really decent equipment in order to actually work. Yeah. You need a good laptop that has a an up to date graphics card, even if it's like a low twenty series or not. You. Otherwise, if you don't, then you pretty much have to use the school's resources and their computers to do the work. But I mean, who? Really and let's face it, the that? only good thing about the graphics card that I had, like mine, is like. A 980, and that's like four years ago to this day. Mm. Probably five if I'm counting correctly. Right. And that 
it runs my games on 60 frames per second. It's designed to do that. But here's the thing. Wait, hold on. Shit, I'm still a little lost in computer knowledge. <coughs> graphics card bring up the graphics, don't they? Hmm? The graphics card bring up the graphics, or I don't remember. Did you bring up the graphics? No, 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 no. Graphics cards. Do they bring up the graphics to one to, to 60 frames and stuff like that? Uh, I'm not even sure, actually. It's fine. I mean, probably. Okay. Basically, what I just said there was just false information. Just, just make that as a false like information counter. <laughs> we should definitely do that. Just not right now, though. We're not that advanced yet. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I mean we I mean we, we we could do it, but as of right now for this channel, we're just trying out our first video and seeing how you guys think about our channel and everything like that. And even so, we still want to continue doing um, these videos and just try to actually have fun with it. Um, yeah, exactly, and that's all. That's pretty much what it's all about. Like, plus here's another here's another cool feature we're gonna try for the channel. Anything you guys can put down in your comments, like any. TV show, any animation you want us to talk about that we know about or we'll look up for or we'll look up. Mm. We'll look it up, give it a few watches, and give our some of our reviews on it if if we if we if you want to agree to that, Eric. I mean Yeah, no? of course. That's actually a really good idea. Because let's, let, 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 let's face it. We have I think you've seen Billy and Mandy, haven't you? Yeah, of course. And uh I love that show. Oh my god! I didn't even talk about cow and chicken. Damn. Oh god. Those my. Yeah, I, I mentioned cow and chicken, but I never talked about yeah, it. Yeah, I want to um, hear about it actually. Like. Okay, here's what I remember seeing as a kid. It was way before I got into Nickelodeon, like right. exactly in that year. Okay. Now here's the thing. Cow and chicken was on a special called. I think it was called Cartoons, Cartoons, Cartoons. It was like a a run. They had they had cow and chicken. They had I think Powerpuff Girls in there. I I think I have the wrong time, but wait, was it Ch like that? Was it like that cartoon cartoon thing? Yeah, that was it. I got you. Yeah, I, I remember that. It was like it had music. And it was like cartoons, cartoons, cartoons. Yeah, exactly something. that thing. But wait a minute, did cow and chicken ever? Was that ever a band show though? Because I remember like seeing this like video about like um it was like the top ten band shows or something, and I thought that was actually on the list. Let me see. Um... Maybe it wasn't that. It was probably something else. It was like this. It was also this cartoon about like a devil or something. It was like a Cartoon Network show. Hmm. It's been dubbed like one of the scariest uh, Cartoon Network shows or something. It was like this devil thing. Like you just see this uh, devil character or something like that. <clears throat> oh god, Caillou. Hmm? Caillou. I remember that show. Caillou? Yeah, so you had the fourth one down. Oh, I see. Okay. Let me look. Wait, your wait, your YouTube's not on, is it? Your audio? Can you um take out the speaker? Well, you, I can hear it if you unmute it. Well, don't don't unmute it. Don't unmute it. Yeah, we don't want to hear anything. Remember, because we're doing oh, this podcast. That, that, that might be my that might be my TV doing that. Okay. Yeah, I can't I can't hear anything right now. Just keep it exactly how it is. Do not turn on that audio in the video. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm I'll not. have to cut it out. So. It doesn't seem like cow and chicken was banned. Let me see. Oh, well, actually, wait, it was on there. Holy shit. You gotta be kidding me. Hmm. Basically, this was the show. That was crazy. Am 
my god, the, the the freaking like weird like show about this was just weird. All right. Okay, you mentioned that, but I don't see anything like that. Do you know the name of the I'll show? I'll have to find it for you, okay? I, yeah, I can't really remember what uh, what it was called. It was definitely like a Cartoon Network show, though. Hmm. Well, regardless of that, um, like, I remember Cow Chicken, like, being funny, like, later. Like, there was, like, this one thing I actually looked into. It was, like... There was this crazy uh, villain slash character name. I think they, they never really gave him a name. I don't remember. He was like red. He was, he was actually a devil. You just saw him on there. Huh. And what he would do to move around is that he would literally just um, move around by bouncing on his butt. I'm not kidding. He would just like have his legs like crossed in like boink, boink, boink. That's like he even like did it like a – I examination for like chicken and he slammed the freaking thing down the, like down his beak. Yeah. The, the, the um, I'm not sure what that's they call it. It's like a, a scope. Yeah. That has like, it's like little, um, scopes around it to help you see your type your type of vision to see which vision is better for you. Mm-hmm. That you can kind of, and he was just like, this, Oh, did that hurt? Well, too bad. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh yeah, that's right. I guess you can tell them that since uh, since he just did a good impression. Um, the, Actually, I did that in in, in, a, in a in a very small tone. Like I, I'm trying not to yell because I'm I don't exactly have any soundproof like areas for like my um because I'm, not, I'm trying not to make too much noise with like all the um. With my voice is everything because you know I still have a, um, a roommate like some part from here, like a few doors down this way, on my uh, on my right, and I'm trying not to make too much noise. Right, but did we uh, we didn't mention it to our uh, viewers though that you're pretty much trying to become a voice actor too. Oh crap, you're right. I also want to be a bit of a voice actor myself. Like I I love doing voices. Like in fact. I think I remember telling you about this. Um, do you remember, like, um, right? I, I did remember telling you. It was like that one time where um, I mentioned I talked about the writer of Hasman Hotel. Yeah. Yeah, I remember telling you that. Okay. Okay. So we're on the same track. Okay, there was this one time, it was before I called Eric, I had one day to myself just thinking, oh, Lord, this whole pandemic thing sucked. So I, out of curiosity, I looked at something on Discord. It was simply just a live chat between the fans (laughs) of Hasman Hotel. Right. And we were talking. This is my first time doing this. For the first, like, 17 minutes, I remember, or I think it was 17 minutes, I didn't say shit. I was on the chat. My voice was like right there, including the very noises I was making in the background without trying. Yeah. And then I, and then I was like, um, excuse me. And they're like, yeah, what, what, what's going on? I was like, is this, am, am I able to like speak or, or anything or yeah, yeah, no, 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 Matt, this is a free channel, Matt. You're able to speak anytime you want. <laughs> okay. Like I was introducing myself about being a voice actor, a game designer, an animator. And people were like, no, no, dude, that's real cool, man. And then we had conversations about like a bit of the pandemic, which I'm not going to get into full detail that. And I don't remember most of what I say or even speak sometimes. I know it's very, very tragic, (laughs) but never, nevertheless, um, (coughs) I tried to do my impersonation of Serpentius, the villain from Hasman hotel. And my God, they said it was spot on. I was like, really? There's no way. Come on. Yeah. Like, at first, and then they were telling, no, 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 dude, that was really spot on. And, my God, like, I did need to, um, 
I'm trying to remember. I think you said hyphen the S's a bit or something. The S sounds or something. Mm-hmm. When it comes to the snake, I don't remember. It. Like, he was giving me some advice on learning on how to be... How to actually be very... And, um... Um, let me think. Uh, shoot. What was it? Oh, I remember. Okay. He was discussing a few things and giving me a few bits of advice about trying to be a voice actor. Like, even he was currently working as well. And, um... Trying to actually, like, um... Figure this stuff out and how to be a voice actor. I took advice in consideration. I need to keep studying on that a bit. And um, when I get myself a microphone, which um, Eric again, thanks again for the second microphone when you have the chance. <laughs> yeah, you don't really have to do that. But I'm, I'm gonna try and get that too, like whenever I can. But um, yeah, and then yeah, that'll basically. Yeah. But yeah, anyway. Um, Oh, yeah, what I also got to is, um, I didn't tell you this part yet, right? But, um, what I also got is, like, you know how they have in studios that, like, basically foam that you put up on the wall to deaden the sound? You, wait, you, 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 you wait, who'd you get that for? Well, I have, I, I bought a lot of it, so I actually have some extra for you, too, now. Aw, thanks, buddy. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, of course, dude. Like, uh, trust me, it's, it was... There are a lot bigger pieces than I thought there were going to be, and I got, like, probably a few of them. So, um, you know, a lot, like a decent amount, probably over 10 or something, so. Jesus, that's I amazing. Really, I only really need about, like, two of them for that, uh, you know, that sound booth that I was telling you I was going to make at the end of the summer. Mm, right. That recording booth. But, um, yeah, basically you can have them for your room or whatever, too. So you'll be able to, like, just put some on your wall. So when you have the microphone, it'll definitely help out with the sound in your room. Yeah. Um, by the way, if, you, if anyone heard any background noise on that, that was me just uh, dusting off my uh, my port of my, um, UBS, my USB keyboard because I'm trying to get dust out of here. <laughs> I'm using, like, uh. I'm using like a rope. keyboard dusters, dude. No, I mean I don't really have one. I need to get one, but I was like no, using like um. I'm talking about like, do you remember like those spray cam ones? Oh God, yeah, I do. I need those to get one. They're great. Okay. I, I do need bought to get one. One of them in my life, pretty much though. Yeah, and they really are very much useful. Like I, I will give them that. You know, um, I bought it too. I bought it because. Basically around um, around the time when Kingdom Hearts 2 was out, like mm -hmm. my PS2 actually broke my original fat PS2, right? So I couldn't play Kingdom Hearts 2 when it came out because you are, the, the lens. Wow, are you serious? Yeah, like oh my, my PS, my old fat PS2 only read um, movies at that point. It didn't play games anymore because the lens was broken. That's so I had to wait like an that's entire. That's a tragedy. Day. Oh yeah, my like, god! I had to wait like I had to wait like an entire like probably like four months or something before I actually got a new uh, a, the PS2 Slim and Kingdom Hearts 2. Oh Jesus Christ! So like all my friends were like playing it and everything like and I couldn't even touch it. But uh, that's just that's just that's just not right. That nature screwed you over on that one. They. They just but, gave like, you that was one of the things is like I was like going to all these great lengths to try and like fix my old fat PS2. Like I was buying like I bought like this biggest ripoff thing I've ever seen in my life, right? It was this mm -hmm. it was supposedly a PS2 DVD lens cleaner, right? Right. The thing was the biggest joke I've ever seen in my life. Okay, it it basically it didn't clean anything. Okay, it's in, it, all it, all this kit came with was like this silver tin, right? And inside of it, of course, it came with the DVD, right? So I mm. so I pop in the DVD, right? All the thing was was literally showing you a freaking simulation, like a literal 3D model simulation of it cleaning the inside of your system. 
and it didn't clean a damn thing. Like it didn't come like it's it it didn't even come with like anything to actually like physically wipe down the lens or anything. So it's like you literally are just paying to watch a DVD simulation of it cleaning your system. It doesn't actually clean anything. That is <laughs> <sighs> so then, like, then what I ended up doing, though, is, like, I was, like, okay, this is, like, this is, once I realized it was a ripoff, I, mm. you know, I went out and I actually bought, a, like, a, a keyboard cleaner, that, like, that, you know, like, the can keyboard cleaner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's basically, like, you, you put it. Wait, the wouldn't it just be air spray, then? Huh? Wouldn't it just be, like, air, wouldn't it just be, like, air spray anyway? Yeah, that's all it is. It's just like a cheap little can of like air, basically that you're spraying out. But like, it yeah, comes it's just out. that's just that's just duster spray, right? Computer yeah, duster. Yeah, exactly. It's just air. Yeah. It it basically like you know you you put in the little red straw or whatever, and then you just press mm. the button, and the air comes out, and the can gets really cold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. So I bought one of those, and then I basically just you know tried shooting the air in my uh i opened up the you know the disc tray and i basically shot the air inside of it to try and like dust off the lens by air but it of worked, course didn't that it? didn't work because like really ah oh, fuck the only way i was pretty left my ass is... off if it did work what's that i was pretty left my ass off if it actually did work yeah, no, I didn't. Like, that PS2 is still broken at this day. The, the only way I can actually probably fix it is if, like, you actually replace the lens altogether, or if maybe if you can open up the PS2 and, like, actually physically clean off the lens with, like, a cloth or something, maybe, but... Wait, a lens. Are you talking about, like, the lens that's at the bottom of the disc reader? Yeah, exactly. Like, the actual disc reader. The, le oh. the lens that actually reads your disc. Mm. Like the laser. You know the sad thing about this, really quick? I had no idea that's how that works at all. <laughs> it's true. I, yeah, I'm that's like, it's like this. Folks, I, I know I'm in trying to be in game design, but there are still a lot of things I don't know that he knows more than I do. <laughs> and he's younger than me, and he's getting ready to graduate soon. I have like a, literally another two years to go. Or, well, I mean, it's it doesn't matter. It's though, not I mean. like we study hardware for a living or anything. and But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean the disc reader thing but that that's all there is to the story really is like i eventually just cracked down and bought the ps2 slim after a few months after i could get one but um yeah yeah it's and true. the ps2 slim that i have is like still working to this very day my god i can just like imagine like all this like stuff going on with like um Man, like, to, to, to think that, a, like, I mean, a pl PlayStation is, like, one of the best consoles of all time, if not one of the, in my opinion, because when you play a PlayStation game, you've been so used to playing so many games that were made specifically designed for games that changed your life, you know? Yeah, exactly. And at some point in my life, like, going back into the subject of Crash Bandicoot at that time, when I was younger, I only played Crash Bandicoot, and here's the thing. It was up to 60 hours, and you want to know why it was up why? to that time every single day? Why? I was so stupid, I had no idea that you had to use a save card in order to actually save your game. <laughs> Damn. Yes. I was that stupid. <laughs> and probably because of this, I kind of like maybe have messed up some of my school assignments. I got lucky and I still passed my classes. Don't get me wrong. Right. But still, I was like, I ain't a life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jesus, that, that, that's like literally trying to actually like think about like what is it you're trying to do? It just gets just – it. it's crazy. When you think about it and how things actually work, you know? Yeah. But when you go back into it now and you just like trying to think like, damn, I was just like so, so stupid. <laughs> like, and 
I played some Nintendo games growing up, but my most primary thing I've ever played in my life uh-huh. was simply just PlayStation games. Yeah, I was about to say, like, is is that why you weren't you weren't didn't weren't used to the memory card? Is because you play a lot of like Super Nintendo and NES games or something? Because like I know those. Oh no no no. no 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 no! That was during the time when the Game Boy Color was almost around. Hold on, let me look. I might be wrong though. I need to look this up because, like I said, that's how much knowledge of games I don't really have. Mm-hmm. Because Game Boy Color, like, I'm surprised that some people still, like, buy these and still play them. Because, look, see? There are, like, some people that are still selling them right now. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, I still have mine, actually, and it still works. But, um, yeah, they were pretty, they were really fun back in the day. I mean, people do it because they still like Pokemon and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, okay, I was eight years old. Oh my god, I actually turned 8 that time, too. Mm-hmm. That it's was actually eight. my very first uh, gaming console, too. Like, first real video game console. Really? Yeah. Incredible. My god. Like, I was always... Pl- I always played, like, those little, like... You know, like, those little hangout wait, electronic on. things. To, like, the Tiger Electronics games. Wait, hold on a second. I was 8 years old. How old were you at that time? The time of the Game Boy Color? Mm-hmm. I, to tell you the truth, I don't even really know. Do you know what year you were born? Yeah, but we really shouldn't, like, give that away, because... Mm, good point. But... Yeah, but, um, nevertheless, though... Like... Playing these, like, games and going back and remembering them what they were... Jesus, it's like... Going back in nostalgia and making you realize that life is just like insane, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a crazy time. Like, because uh, <laughs> I, literally, I literally like have this memory of uh, you know, like. Around the time of the Game Boy Color, like watching that, um, playing with the Rugrats in Paris, uh, McDonald's toys or Burger King toys or whatever it was back then, too. Right, right. <laughs> For that Rugrats in Paris movie, remember that? Oh, speaking of Rugrats, dude. <laughs> okay. Do you remember that crazy phase McDonald's went through making animated episodes of Ronald McDonald? Dude. I can't believe you just mentioned that because I literally just looked that up today. Uh huh. I like I literally just was looking that up. I just thought of that today. I was like, the wacky adventures of Ronald McDonald just popped in my head. I'm like, I'm gonna watch this. Like, <laughs> and here's the thing: dude, they were originally a VHS. Dude, I you know have... it was because they're all direct to video releases. Like, I have I have almost every one of those videotapes too still, but. There was, oh like, there my was, god, like, you know what? I this is over with watching those. I don't care if they sucked or not. We're watching them. Just yeah. to comment on them and just be like, well, he looks better as a cartoon character than he does in real life. So Dude, that's that's what I loved about him. Like they had they were just great. Like they had that awesome live action sequence before every episode in like Ronald McDonald's house or whatever, right? Too so, bad that too bad that dog in real life was creepy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> as an it was like oh. and then, like the animated wow. bits too like they were um God almighty how the hell i i always thought i was like the only one but jesus christ Hold and on, the animation me... the animation was really good and uh i remember oh I my god it was right there in the first pop-up look at this like i love the way the characters look though like i love ronald's look yeah and it's just like just, take a look so like charming. i remember like, that's the thing. I remember having Grimace Island and the Haunted Mansion. That's what I remembered. Yeah, Scared Silly. I love that Scared one. Scared Silly. It just, like, like, look at this. Like, See, look, that's, look at this that's the playlist right there. See that six-video playlist? That has every episode. That's so sad that it literally only had that, too, because 
Yeah, God, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I know exactly who animated this, and it had to be the person that did the Rugrats. It I was. It was Klasky Supo. Yeah, and they're the same guys that did, um, like, oh, my God. Just to think that all this actually existed at that time, which is nuts. I know, dude. That That is, like, that's, like, one of the definitions of nostalgia for me is that show, that whole series, like so good ah, ah, like i know it, it probably must not have done great with everybody i mean honestly i'm wondering like yeah i mean it was klasky supo so it had to have been really popular though right like i believe it was popular for a short while because remember dude and like Rugrats, the wild thornberries and i don't think Duckman at that time because Duckman was like over before that even showed up at all yeah and was dude, like the best thing is they had the best like promo commercials for those wacky adventures of Ronald McDonald things though. Like I mm-hmm. remember like seeing on every every one they would show like the previews before the VHS tapes. They were like the best commercials. Like Yeah. Like, my God. So excited for it. Like I remember seeing this one in one of the one of the videotapes for like the Loch Ness Monster one or whatever, but I never got it. I never, I, I still haven't seen it. That's why I'm gonna watch all those pretty soon, though. My God, you know what? We should really like, um, like, and there are people like giving out reviews, like, even right now, like, oh no, actually, since like years ago, like, don't get me wrong, like, when you were a kid watching this stuff, you didn't really care that much. Yeah. I thought it was entertaining because I just never expected it. I mean, and I think, I mean, back then, the Ronald McDonald clown, like, my God, that clown is scary in real life. But here in the cartoon, he's tolerable. I don't know. Like, to tell you the truth, like, I never really found him scary. No, no, I'm talking about, no, no, I believe the cartoon version is better than the actual version of him. I don't know why. No, I say what you mean. I'm just saying, like, in general, like, I don't really, I never really thought of uh, Ronald McDonald, even the live one is scary, though. Like, I always liked him for some reason. And that's the thing, too, though. Like, you had, like, I'm not going to lie, that was a very, very clever idea they had at the time. Yeah. I mean, it may not have worked with everybody, but let's face it, when you (sighs) paid for this stuff, you would only just get it with a Happy Meal, I think, for a certain amount of time that they had it. Right. Like, dude, imagine if they made, like, a new one or something, or if they actually brought it back or, like, even started doing, like, these type of things for, like, Oh, other you know that's not going to be possible, because let's like, face it, people are just... Let me explain why it's not going to work. Because, let's face it, I don't think anyone really would like to have it at all. Yeah. It's not because of, it's not even because of McDonald's. It's because of McDonald's being a commercial franchise, and it's like, oh god, we gotta eat their their food, and now we gotta watch their crappy cartoon again. What the hell? But when I was a kid, I enjoyed it actually. Like, they had like original voice actors. My god, that must have been a lot of money that McDonald's put into those videos. <laughs> I know, right? I love it, though. I mean, I still like it. I can't necessarily say I love it, but I had to watch back and just, like, look into it. Like, people would probably be looking back going, like, is this what the fuck I grew up with? What What, what is this stuff? <laughs> what the hell did I do to deserve this? Jimmy, what? You existed. That was your crime. There's no shame in it. You lived your life, and now you're slowly dying watching this. How do you feel? Like my soul's been run down my body, and I just got like the Grim Reaper just ate my soul, shat it out, and pushed it right back in my chest. My body was struggling to breathe. Do you feel good? Let me describe that. Is that it? Yes, Jimmy. Yes, I do. I love being an asshole. <laughs> just like out of nowhere, just like. <laughs> Hearing that one friend just saying, I just love being an asshole for no reason. <laughs> God almighty. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Okay. But but in serious talk, though, I believe it was actually pretty good. Yeah. 
God, I cannot, like, don't get me wrong. The show never had that great much of character development, but I don't know. I probably had to look back into it eventually and just be like, I don't know. I want to see it in the original like VHS just before watching again on you on YouTube if I ever have to. But yeah, because the VHS tapes have actual previews too, so they're different than those YouTube videos. Yeah, like, I'll dig them up if I can. Like I'll see if I can actually find them eventually. And don't worry, we won't be watching them until like the uh, Barney surprise birthday party is over. So you know. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I can't, I gotta change that to something else. <laughs> the people are probably gonna be like, the Barney surprise birthday party, what the fuck are you talking about? Because <laughs> I think if you edit out, like, the part where it's like, oh, God, like, I think I cut out the part where he explained that it was the pandemic that he was talking about, not the you know what. <laughs> this is weird. Some videos get demonetized, they mentioned the coronavirus. <laughs> Damn it. You're gonna po- okay, let me restart that. Some people are going to simply just be demonetized for even mentioning the pandemic. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I hit my nose for a cover my mouth. Ow. Yeah. That but, sucks. Okay, Ow. but uh, I guess like about like, I mean, yeah, like one of our next topic was going to be uh, talking about like symbiotic titan and, and uh, maybe like a few other things. But yeah. Like, oh, I've been, God. I've been meaning to mention it to you, though. Like, did you actually ever see the show? I did. I was in high school. At first, I thought this was one of the greatest shows because it was done by getting Travosky's team and himself. Right. And now, as I look back into it, I'm like the fuck did i just watch <laughs> yeah dude because like um pretty much the same here like i remember watching it right like after it was probably like i think it came out uh at least i started i found it probably like maybe like a year or two after like i graduated or something like that mm. from high school but uh maybe a few years after but yeah, like I was watching like all those um, shows and stuff. But that was a great show. Like I remember, I was always looking forward to that. Like every single like Saturday night or whatever. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I don't know why. I guess some people just didn't like it, and it just didn't bowl well for most people. I don't know. That's crazy. But as I remembered. I kind of understand why. Yeah. I mean, dude, like, back then, like, that's the crazy thing, right? Is, like, when I was watching that show and everything back then, like, I was just, like, I was at a pretty... I was at a time in my life where I was just pretty much lost. Like, Yeah. Like, I was, like, done... I was done... I was done with high school, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And I pretty much said to myself that I was, like, gonna take, like, a a year off of high school, right, to pretty much start actually building up my portfolio, my art portfolio and stuff for when I, like, was going to start applying to colleges and stuff. So, like, I said I was going to, like, take the year off to start doing that and, like, making these artworks and stuff that I could add to my portfolio. And, like, that was the crazy thing is, like, you know, when when you just take – when you're just out of school and everything, you just really take all that time for granted. Like, you're just – Sometimes you're just sitting there and, you know, I wasn't in school or anything after I graduated. I took that year off and I, mm-hmm. dude, I didn't do like almost anything that whole year. Like I, that, which pretty much defeated the whole purpose of it. Cause I just, I just couldn't really bring myself to do it. You know, I was just like, I guess just dumbfounded by the fact that I had all this time on my hands and I was just like sitting there, like just doing all this fun stuff and like, couldn't bring myself to really do anything but of course i did i did work on some projects and stuff but like it wasn't nearly enough like i was wanting to do like a lot of artwork but i just couldn't bring myself to do it but and then eventually before you know it like you're sitting there just like time is flying you're just sitting there just doing nothing you're just not you're not even in school or anything you're just sitting there basically like a neat yeah you know what a neat is right not completely. I think I it's forgot. Like, 
Okay, basically, they, they make, like, anime of it and everything. It's called, like, it's N-E-E-T, which is basically, like, an acronym for not in education, I think, like, education, entertainment, or training, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Which basically means you're just sitting there and doing nothing with your life. You know, just basically, like, a bunch of, like, you know, they say neats are, like, it, it was a term that started, like, in, like, London or something like that, right? Right. But um, that's just what they call it for people who are just like kind of like, you know, like 20 year olds or whatever, 20 to 30 year olds who kind of don't have a plan for life. Jesus. But like that's the crazy thing is like, you know, I even though I had the plan to go to college, I, you know, I really wasn't sure where I was going to go yet at all. Like I was just like that was back, uh, you know, like I was just like I wasn't sure what I was going to do and I just. You know, then I realized, like, you know what, I really have to develop a plan to actually go to college now, because I just can't keep doing this. Like, it's already been, like, probably, like, two to three years, and I'm just sitting here doing nothing. And then, of course, like, I have my, you know, my dad telling me, to like, yeah, you definitely have to, like, get a job or go to school or something, you know? But that was the thing. I just didn't really know what to do at that point, but... You know, then eventually I, you know, worked something out and thought of a plan, and then I finally did it, and it took, like, probably a year for that to happen. But, uh, you know, I'm pretty lucky that I even did do it, you know? Yeah, I got you, bud. <sighs> and that's the thing, too, like... I don't know, some of the stuff in here is just a little bit odd, and... Like, I think Symbiotic Titan just got weird with a few things as well, but maybe that's just me. Really? What, what, like, what was weird about it? Well, the fact that the fact that this guy right here, um, I think his name was Lance at the time. Mm-hmm. He was being tortured by this uh, weird monster, and apparently he was like... Um, putting his tentacles in his body or something jesus i was like the fuck was i looking at <laughs> i'm not sure i mean there was a lot of problems with that show but that's something i i don't know i mean most people do like it and some people don't but it's just it's very strange you know how, to, how when you really really think about it yeah exactly Heck, I remember liking Whatever Happened to Robot Jones, and it wasn't even that great. Now that I remember it. Yeah. Like, My Life as a Teenage Robot, I thought that was actually pretty entertaining. Even though oh, it was- yeah, I remember that show. <laughs> that was a great show. It was very good, I think. It just wasn't very popular, and I think can understand why. I mean, you know, because it had those trends of being, like, a teenage, like, girl as a robot which i understand that does get very repetitive and very boring very fast yeah and i don't know maybe it's just um insane on how people like think when it comes to like a show like people are gonna have their own perspectives and their own like little views on it and that's completely 100 percent accurate and 100 percent just you know, it's just very much fine, and it works out well in its own strange way. Because everyone has something they love about a show, and then there's just some things that people hate about the show. You right. know, like um, Hey, it wasn't that one. Are you sure that you remember there was a band cartoon with a little devil? Because that's the guy from Robot Chicken. That's him. Yeah, it's not Robot Chicken. Like I'll okay, I'll I'll pull up the video and I'll send it to you or something. Like it, it basically had an art style just like Cow and Chicken or something or one of those old Cartoon Network shows. Like, well, hold on. Describe what you said it was. I mean, he's basically like this character. He's this devil character, and he's like laughing. He was called like Father, maybe or something. Father. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't really remember. Don't even type. Don't type, Father. You probably won't find anything. You mean? I don't know. I, Conan no, Kissing. Okay, no, here? it's not that. It's not that. That's what I was thinking. I. That's where the name Father came from. But no, it's not that. It's um. Like, let me see if I can find it for you right now. Yeah, because I'm very curious. Yeah, it basically, like, has an art style that's, like, say, like, like say, like, the dad of the Powerpuff Girls or something, but instead he's, like, a red devil character. And, like, he's sitting there, like, in hell. And he's, like, l maniacally laughing. And that was, like, one of the band shows or something. Isn't it him? Hmm? That's him, right? Oh, yeah, I think that is him, actually. It wasn't really banned because of that. It had to be something else. Well, that was it, though. That was, like, one of the banned things. It was it was actually an episode with him in it. Huh. It was, like, a Powerpuff Girls episode or something that was banned with him. Interesting. But, yeah, that was him, I think, like. It might have been the the apocalyptic one, but who really knows anymore? I mean, some shows are banned, some of them are not, and some of them are, uh, I don't know. Like, geez, when when you when you really think about it, like, my God, there was like speaking of Power of Girls, there was like. Um, a Japanese anime about them. Did you know about this? Yeah, how they changed the style in Japan for them. That was like adorable, but at the same time, why would you do this? <laughs> like, for God's sake, you had the freaking like rowdy rough boys lifting up their skirts and just like doing stupid breakdance moves and just like, what are you doing? Yeah. Just have them yeah. fight each other for Christ's sake. At least look. At least Pepper Girls, when it first started, had salty in that fight. <laughs> the Rowdy Rough Boys were, like, mean. They were just, like, mean fighters. Right. And I was, like, thinking, <sighs> oh, Jesus Christ, this is happening. They got their asses kicked, and they got, fought back. The only way they actually won, ironically, and I think in the dumbest way possible, was, like, giving them a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> That's all they did. Oh, dude. Like, okay, so like, did you ever play like the um the Powerpuff Girls game for the Nintendo sixty four? I never play games like that. I only play like certain games at the time when I bought them, like God of War. Um, it's like Cooper. You Arts. gotta come over and play it sometime. Like, uh, it's a fun game. It's called you know like Chemical Extraction or something. You know what? Fuck it. I will. I will definitely will. <laughs> It's like, it's basically, what it is, is it's just an arena fighter. So basically, you just choosing the, one of the girls or whatever, or one of the characters, and you just basically beating up each other in like an arena fighter style gameplay. Hmm. Like, it's fun because you can just like pick up the objects and throw them at each other or whatever. Hmm. Let me think. That is very interesting, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm. There was, like... Oh, my God. I can't believe I actually forgot to mention these shows. Damn, I'm such a moron. Okay. That's okay. Did you ever see Ed and Eddie when you were a kid? Um, okay, yeah, I have seen it a little bit when I was a kid, like, and especially, yeah, go on, though, yeah. No, no, go, go, go ahead. Well, Finish. I was gonna say especially, like, since we're on this topic of, like, nostalgic things, right, like, I think I already told you this before, but I'll say it again for the viewers, basically, like, there was probably one of my favorite cartoon memories is, um... Well, not only, of course, this movie is, like, one of the greatest, <clears throat> probably one of the greatest animated movies I've ever seen, actually, which is Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, but, um, Thank you! 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. But, um, like, it, with that movie, though, I had it on VHS, right? Because that was, again, mm-hmm. like, what I had to watch, basically, were all these VHS tapes as a kid. That was one of the main ways I watched things. But, anyway, like, they had, they actually did have, like, these great previews before it. And, like, that was one of the previews on the videotape was for Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Mm-hmm. And they showed, like, this awesome clip of, like, you know, just Ed, Ed, and Eddie, they're just sitting there running across the screen doing their, you know, they're running in place doing that run thing they do. Mm. And, like, that's just a great memory I have is, like, seeing them in that commercial. And, like, I just got so excited when I saw that and, like, heard that, um, basically heard the music play and everything. But I was always, but I was kind of disappointed because it was, like, I was, like, I have no way to watch this. Like, I don't even have cable or Cartoon Network. So it's like, and I never got around to actually buying any of the VHS tapes, but, um, yeah. My God, like, I still remember some of the stuff that, like, um, Ed and then they did, like, especially with the Boomerang episode. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that? No. I mean, I, to tell you, the, I haven't seen many of the episodes. That's the only oh, problem. Right. Say that. Even though okay. I haven't seen it. Like, I saw it over my friend's house and stuff a lot, though. There was a boomerang in the in, in the show that allowed them when they touched it to change their personality of what you their ironic self. Like for example, Ed being highly intelligent for being such a dumbass. <laughs> a lovable a lovable guy, but still a dumbass. Eddie from being a selfish jerk to being a care motherly person, like very motherly, like and now to hold the boomerang and treat it like it was actually a baby. <laughs> and then Double D from being a very smart, sophisticated person into being this weird, perverted guy just taking his clothes off in the middle of the street out of nowhere. <laughs> like, trying to become like a natural news, be, just be like this. Wow, man, it's it hot or what? <sighs> it's like, chill, bro. I'm sweating from all this heat. It was like sexy jazz music playing in the background. I was like, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? What are you doing? <laughs> Writers, what are you doing? Like, oh, Eddie was just like, and then Eddie was like, this ain't right. <laughs> it's like, who are you? <laughs> God, and then with the moment when you like snatch the boomerang away, it changes back to their original personality. Like, when Ed first had it, that was, like, the funniest part of it. I laughed my ass off. It was like this. Like, Cacers. I, I don't remember how we first started. It was like, an, an undefined quantum field theory left upon by leftars and quasars by <laughs> Edward. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh my ass off the entire time. Wow. Dude, they even have uh, they even have an Ed, Ed and Nitty game for the PS2. I know. I wanted to originally play that too. I never when played I was it though. Game. Yeah, I was I it's probably good though, right? Like, I don't know. That's the thing. I'm not sure if it was actually great or. Oh what. yeah, it. I remember it did look really good. Like, um, I remember seeing the videos for it on like uh, some website one time. But yeah, like it actually the P, it does. It's like it, people have said it's like a hidden gem or something for the PS2. So. Yeah. Look, and the thing is, like... But yeah, oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, my God. Speaking of games based on shows, I cannot wait for the new Samurai Jack video game coming out. Yes, dude, that's... I can't wait either. I can't wait! Like, that came can't out of nowhere. Me. Like, I was not expecting that. But then again, not really, because, I mean, the show is getting popular, right? Like, it's kind of coming back, but... Well, I want to say it's coming back. I mean, in popularity. Well, let me be wrong. The, the game still has a dedicated fan base. It feels like. Yeah, because don't get me wrong. Like the show is not coming back. I don't think they've finished it completely. But right, right. Yeah, I didn't mean it's coming back. I meant like the fan base, like for it. But yes. But yeah, I guess that that can bring us to our uh, our next topic. We're we're pretty much like approaching the halfway mark. Uh, like, 
you know, our next topic, I guess we could talk about like Tudami and stuff like that. You know what? Just yes. For now. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're kind of leading into it, right? But yes, I'm not gonna lie though. Toonami was by far one of the weirdest yet most awesome badass things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I do not remember when I was younger. I do not remember the very like the very first announce the very first spokesman for Toonami. He well, looks like it, he was, isn't hasn't it always been the same guy that voice actor guy? His oh, name? it was never Tom. It was never Tom to begin with. No. Then who was it? I will show you. In fact, here let me pull it up. Uh, burp, 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 burp. Tsunami. Um, okay, first off, this guy is Tom. If I may explain. Now this is Tom. Wait, I can't see anything. Really? I thought I have on screen share. Oh, I know why. <laughs> you know, hey, hey, hang on a second. Let me take this quick call. Sure. I'll be right back to you guys. Okay, I'm back. So I haven't had a chance to call the Walmart yet. I will do that. So. <laughs> uh, I guess you heard that in the uh, living room. I barely heard anything. Mom's in the hospital, but she's gonna be okay. Oh jeez. Yeah, it, it's complicated. I'll explain all that stuff to you later, like after the um. After we're done with our recording. Sure, yeah. I just wanted to, so... I'm so are you sure you really don't... Huh? Are you sure you really don't see any, like... Oh, that's why. I didn't click on... Okay. Okay, now do you see Yeah, it? yeah, I see it now. Okay, see this guy right here? Yeah. Now... Uh, hold on. Huh, that's right. This is the second one. Now, hear me out. This would be... Tom in all different versions, right here. Right, I know he has different versions, but because I've seen most of them, the only ones I haven't seen are probably the very first ones or whatever. The really early ones from like the '90s or something. Okay, now see this one right here that I'm pointing to with my mouse. Yeah, he's the latest one. Not quite. This is the latest one. Well, no, I mean like he was the one from like 2000, like like 
nine or something when it when it went away. Yeah, that is true. Like all these are the incarnations of Tom right here, including this guy right here. Right. Of course, you yeah. gotta go with the one that's like. I mean, one of the. Um, I like the look of him where it's like he's the. He has the the sunglasses on or whatever. You know, it's part of his helmet. It looks makes you look like he has sunglasses, sort of. But the one with where he doesn't have his eyes showing. That like that one right there is cool. But well, who you were saying was the first one? Okay, the original Tsunami host was this guy, Motor. Are you serious? Correct, Motor from freaking Space Coast to Coast. Yeah, I've heard of that show. It's that's a really cool show, dude. But um, I, I don't remember much about Space Coast to Coast. Was it like a comedy skit or something? Honestly, I thought it was like kind of like Harvey Birdman or something. Not really. They had Spaceman like interviewing people, including like Motar was like part of the show. Huh, and Motar. But I yeah, like I never saw that version of Toonami. Like that was really old, probably right. What was what year was that even? Like probably, probably from like that's even before nineteen ninety nine. So. Let me see, Motar. That's crazy though. Um, Okay. Hey, hold on, I'll be right back. Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Were you sleeping? No. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, now, let's see. Now, if I remember correctly, Motar year. Okay, now, 1997 to 1999. Right. That's where I remember him. Yeah, there was no way in hell that I uh, saw that because of- – I didn't watch Tsunami until like probably like 2001 or something. And me, I remember seeing Motar in 1999. <laughs> That's crazy. Remember, remember, I was around 91, but that was just me being born that year. I'm not telling which month or what day because guess what, internet? No. <laughs> Second of all, here's the funny thing too. This has been around for so long, and the first time I remembered, like, Motar, if I remember correctly, that was during the time of Sailor Moon as well. Yes, dude, I love Sailor Moon, but I can't remember Sailor when I like watched Sailor Moon. Moon not even in the 90s because, at all. They got that completely wrong. Honestly, like, if Sailor Moon did only air on Toonami back in the day, I guess that's where I probably saw it. But then again, I didn't have cable, so I had to have seen it on regular old public programming. Or videotapes. Well, actually, that's funny. I I always I, rented, my mom would always rent the uh, VHS tapes for me. That's actually the funny thing, too. My mom and I bought the very last Sailor Moon, like, ever. Like, during the defeat of Queen Barrel. Okay. That's what I remember seeing most of the time. So, basically, I kind of spoiled it for myself, not seeing every episode. Yeah. At that time. Then there was Toonami, and then random episodes were showing up. Either it was Toonami of some kind of, like, category, but I didn't remember seeing Moltar anywhere near that at all. Yep. So, do you, like, what are your favorite, like, memories with it, though, like, Toonami? Okay, here's the thing I loved about Toonami. First off, as time progressed, and when Tom finally showed up, I think, Mm -hmm. let's see, hold on. On through the years, okay. Now, the hosting period 
for example, say, um, let me get off this uh, thing here. I'm not sure Wikipedia really counts as actual information, unlike Tom. Mm -hmm. But Tom, ironically, started in July 1999, September 21, 2000. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And then, that was him during the time when I remembered seeing Sailor Moon more often. Huh. And that was actually during the afternoon. Because remember, Tsunami was originally in the afternoon, remember? Oh, I didn't, I didn't know it was in the afternoon. And, and same way with this guy I right here. I thought it was always Saturday nights. Well, no. At first, Tsunami was always around, like... However, it, it's been a while. Like, I don't remember when or where, too, though. Like, um, but yeah, do you like all I remember from it is like, oh, yeah, by the way, really quick, did uh, you know? See these games right here? Yeah, Tom reviewed them. Yeah, like in those little game reviews or whatever. Yeah, Animal Crossing, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. That would have been really stuff. cool to see, actually, back in the day. Like, I didn't know he did all those ones, but well, no, 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 no. he didn't do them. He, he, they, they, the tsunami voted on them being the games on the the, the ratings. Right. Well, what? Okay. What's today. your favorite memory of him doing a review of a game? That would be Shadow of the Colossus, actually. Nice. And I never played Shadow of the Colossus yet. I've seen. Now, folks, if you're still listening to this, when you do hear this, hear me out. At the time, I didn't have a chance to be interested enough to get these <laughs> games or have the chance to even get them because I was still going through some economic crisis despite the fact that I was attending college. Now, hear me out. I didn't know if they did update the game or if it's on Steam right now. In fact, I'm going to take a quick look at that first. Let's see. Um... I actually did play Shadow of the Colossus. It's a great game. Like, I only played it, though. I never played it on PS2, even though I did play the demo when it came out. Mm. I basically yeah. only played the HD remaster on PS3. That's true. Um... <sighs> Let me see if they actually did review that. Okay, yeah, yeah, it was definitely it was definitely around two thousand eight. But here's the thing, it wasn't just Shadow of the Colossus they reviewed either. Guess what other game they did? What other game? Let me out. Let me look. Oh, that's right. They actually did review Doom. I, I forgot about that. That was like during two thousand sixteen when it was on Saturday nights. Now. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, Saturday nights. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Okay, I was sure. Wow, Motor did that too. Holy crap! Cool. Starcraft. Wow, I didn't know that. Soul Caliber. Holy Jesus! Dang. Let's see. They reviewed a lot of games back but then. Dude, like, Damn. okay, here's my favorite one, right? Or were you still waiting to tell me your second favorite one? Yeah, well, my, my second favorite um, review that they, they brought into it. Mm -hmm. It was... It should be here somewhere. <laughs> I could have sworn... Oh, they actually rev reviewed Bioshock Infinite? Really? Huh. Crap, I had no idea. Nice. But it had to be here somewhere. It couldn't just be, like, not here. Uh, give it a second. Prince Persia's Chance of Time, also one of my favorites. Let's nice. see. Uh...
wasn't Pimpkin. It wasn't Stuntman. Wait, Mr. Mosquito was also reviewed? Wow. Oh, man, that game. I have so much nostalgia for that game. Yeah. Like, that brings up the whole thing about, like, uh, PS2 demo discs. <sighs> man, where was it, though? It was such a long... Oh, wait. Wait, hold on. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Remember correctly, the very same composer. Here we go. Remember correctly, there was one other game. Holy crap, he actually did... Wait, he did animes too? Holy shit, that's incredible. <laughs> that could have been it. There had to be another game... Wait, was it? I remember now. Okay. Yes. This is it right here. Eco. Oh, Eco? Yes. Oh, dude. Well, you should have told me if it was another thing like Shadow of the Colossus. I could have told you that. There's... Yeah, yeah, there's three in this. There's three basically in the in the eco series. There's and my God, Lost they... Eco and um and what's it called? The Last Guardian. Yeah, they literally reviewed like eco as well, but I'm surprised they didn't mention much of it either. Like I believe they say that um, Shadow of the Colossus is basically the prequel to uh, eco. Because, Wait. because here's the thing, like, at the end of Shadow of the Colossus, like, spoiler alert, you know, that the boy was born with horns. Mm. And basically, that's Eco, basically. Or he, not, that's not Eco, you know, the character in Eco himself, but that was the first of, you know, that horned race to exist. Huh. And then basically that's – you can tell in Eco that basically a lot of the technology looks a lot more evolved than it did in Shadow of the Colossus. So that's why they think – that's why they say it's like the sequel to – Eco is the sequel to Shadow. My god, that's fascinating. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. Like, I mean I loved Shadow of the Colossus. I, I only played a little bit of Eco. I started playing it and then I just kind of uh, fell through on that playthrough, but – yeah, like my favorite review Toonami did was actually it was um it was one of the Tomb Raider games. They did like right. this review on like I think it was probably Tomb Raider Legend that appeared there, but because it was around the time when like I was watching like Naruto and stuff on there, right when Naruto came out. Oh yeah. But like. <clears throat> yeah, like it was that they did like the whole review and it was like. Basically, one of the parts was, like, Lara basically dressed up in the dress or whatever, and she's, like, invading that uh, mansion or, or like, trying to, like, take something, an artifact from that well, museum actually, or something. She's, like, in a museum at night. That's what I remember the most. But, um, yeah, it was a great review. It's just a great time for Toonami. Like, because that, that was the thing, like, uh, you know, Toonami, the, probably one of the earliest memories I have of watching it was, like, Wait, you said Tomb Raider, um... I think it was Legend? Tomb Raider Legend or something. But, um... Like, my friend, right? I used to have this friend, Kevin, right? You know, mm -hmm. we used to... Um, you know, we used to hang, a lot, hang out a lot, and he was one of my best friends at the time. You know, back where I used to live, and, um... Basically, you know, we... I, like, slept over his house one time, and, um... You know, we... 
uh, we basically stood up, uh, you know, we, we basically were like playing games and stuff, but then we eventually, you know, wanted to stay up late as we could. And, um, Wait. you know, that was one of the reasons why is, um, so we actually found Toonami on TV. Like we were just searching through the channels or whatever in his family room. And, um, you know, he had like this, he had this TV that was like mounted, like, this like cut out in the top of his wall basically like it was like sunken in so that you could put a tv on it it was like a little like stand it was like in a little cut out in the wall right that you could fit a tv inside of it and that's where his tv was and we were just sitting there like uh his kitchen was kind of off to the left or whatever and then his family room was like just in the center you know a little bit far away from that tv so we were just sitting there like you know, I'm just sitting there on the couch, like, sleeping there, basically. He's sleeping on the other couch or whatever, and, uh, you know, we were waiting for, like, uh, you know, we found Toonami, and then, um, I don't know if it was the first time I ever found Toonami, but it was definitely one of the first times I probably really watched it, like, but we watched, uh, it was, like, Dragon Ball GT they had on it at the time, and, uh, yeah, it was just a great memory, because, like, we, like, honestly, like, we didn't even really know what we were watching at the time. Like, you know, like, we had no idea, like, that was, like, a Japanese anime. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we just we just saw, like, Dragon Ball, and, like, you know, for all we know, that could have just been, like, some American show. Like, we had no idea what it even was. Not, like, actually, you know what? That was exactly the same thing I remembered, because when I was a kid, they never explained where some of the stuff came from on television. They just... Yeah, exactly, right? It's like, you think, like, because that's what I used to think, is, like, I would have never guessed that half of that anime and stuff actually came from Japan. Like, cause that's the thing, like, I, that's just how uneducated, like, people are when it comes to these things, like, back in the day and stuff. Like, oh, yeah. It wasn't Especially until probably, like, like, later on that I actually found out that it's all, like, Japanese made. But, um, <laughs> and that's because of the internet helped me find that out and stuff, too, right? But... But yeah, like, yeah. G Dragon Ball GT, like, it's a, it was such a great show. Like, I know that a lot of people probably praise, like, Dragon Ball Z the most, but, like, GT had, like, this crazy, like, style to it. Like, I, I really liked the look of uh, Goku in that and stuff, and, like, it was just crazy. Like, I'm like, what is, like, I know Dragon Ball Z, right? Like, I've seen it before, but, like, then I'm, like, looking, like, what the hell is GT? Like, he's got, like, these crazy, like, red eyes and everything like why GT does he look different? is more of a non-canon thing and people hated it because <laughs> it just didn't fit and super saiyan 4 was the thing but remember it's not actually canon to the story anymore because of dragon ball super continuing from <laughs> that time dragon ball z was supposed to end right. i think I think it was supposed to end with Goku finally going against Oob, Majin Buu's like opposite counterpart that makes the full Majin Buu, you know? Mm -hmm. And then like that was the thing that was like, you know, since we found that, like we <laughs> we were just like we thought we were such badasses for just like watching it, like staying up at late at night watching it. Like we it was one of those things where like we thought we would actually get in trouble for watching it. And you know what? That's actually the funny thing. You're looking at a kid, at a guy who used to be probably eight or nine years old when he first saw Outlaw Star. Yeah, Outlaw Star. I I never saw that show. But and Cowboy Bebop, by the way, don't forget. That's when I was being baby babysat by one of my mother's friends. She had no idea I was watching this stuff. Well, you know they brought that back. They actually brought back Outlaw Star on uh, Toonami, like probably like a few years ago or something. Like, I know. I need to watch it again. Yeah. It's magic. It's awesome. <clears throat> and then oh, like okay and then later on like yeah like i had it then right and i saw it then but like that was uh i can't remember if i had cable around then but anyway i, ha I saw it over his house and then um basically when i started watching tsunami a lot again though was basically at the time when uh basically when naruto came out it was like it was in like the fifth grade right so like you know that was like the popular thing and like cool thing like all all my friends and i were like watching and into right is like we we're mm -hmm. just starting to get into manga and everything like because they came out with that 
I don't know if you remember or not, right? But it was on Toonami. They had this. They had this thing called the Naruto New Year, the Naruto New Year's Marathon. Hmm. And that was the very first time that they actually aired Naruto on Toonami. The very first time it actually came to America. Well, remember, there was a time. There was a time where I was in California where Toonami actually wasn't even there at that one point. Right. That's that was easy. I think. I think it was. There was a. There was a special. Um, like thing they did during that time called a. Uh, no, wait, no, Zumi, Zumi. I was still in Mississippi during that time. Yeah. I think they still did it. I don't remember. But then, like, um, yeah, they had that Naruto New Year's thing, and, like, I watched it, and I was, like, that pretty much reignited my love for, like, you know, like, anime and stuff like that. Like, that's when I started actually getting into it again, right? So, like, everybody in my class, like, was all watching it, and, like, you know, we went out and, like, bought, like, the freaking, like, Naruto manga and everything. Like, I bought, like, the first issue yeah. of it. And, like, I was, like, reading it, and then, uh, like, my friend had it, and he had different issues and stuff, and then, um, we're, like, we're just sitting there, like, this stuff is, like, badass, like, how have we never seen anything like this before, really? I'm, like, yeah, of course I've seen Sailor Moon when I was, like, super young, right, but, like, I never saw, like, anything like that before, really. But then, um, yeah, like, my friend, like, this one kid I knew, Paul, he was, like, he always hated, um, he didn't really like Naruto that much, but he was, like, a huge Inuyasha fan. Like, and he was, uh, like... Inuyasha. I remember that when I was a kid, too. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it's pretty funny, though. But, yeah, he was, uh, like, he had, like, he would bring, like, an Inuyasha manga to class and everything and read that, like, with this other kid. But, um, yeah, there were some good times, all right, and, like... I remembered being such a fanatic for the One Piece manga. My God. Oh, yeah, of course. One Piece was another thing, too, is, like, uh, you know, you know, we watched One Piece, too, but uh, that ar- that actually aired on, like, Cartoon Network, too. Only on Cartoon Network when Tommy was gone at that point. Huh? Only Cartoon Network at that time was hosting it, remember? Yeah, like, I remember it, it would... One like One Piece would actually come on TV probably around like even after school when we were done probably around three p.m. too, which is the crazy thing. Like now it only shows like at nighttime on Toonami, but it was actually aired on like at like three p.m. for us too. But yeah, and then around that time, of course, you have all these perfect classic like anime games and stuff. Like we were, since we were like kind of obsessed with it, like at least I was, like that and Kingdom Hearts and stuff like that. Like they also had like, you know, like I bought the uh, like the first Naruto game I bought was I think Naruto Clash of Ninja. Yeah. For the GameCube, and then I played the sequel, and then then I played Naruto Ultimate Ninja One and Two. And then, like, we were playing the shit out of those games. Like, I had my friend sleep over, and we we pretty much beat, like, Naruto Ultimate Ninja, like, overnight. Like, we stayed up all night to unlock, like, every character in the game and everything. And, um, mm-hmm. it was crazy. But, uh, yeah, and then, of course, like, my friend had the Inuyasha game, too, for the PS2, Feudal Combat. Mm. And I remember seeing, like, the Inuyasha... There was another Inuyasha game for PS2 called, like, uh, Secret of the Divine Jewel or something like that. It was, like... I think that was an RPG at that time. Yeah, it was, like, like the RPG, right? So, like... But I never played that one. I only saw it in the store. But I, I always wanted to pick it up, but I never really could because, you know, games were so expensive around that time. I, I think I played it at that point. I don't really remember actually liking it. <sighs> yeah, it's not that... I don't think it's that great, but okay. And then here's the other thing about Tsunami Two is like, do you remember the thing they had called the uh, Month of Miyazaki? Mm, wait, wasn't that the thing where they introduced like Miyazaki films on Cartoon Network? Yes, dude. Yeah, that's was... right. That was the time where Cartoon Network itself was evolving. Yep. Of its own, like, like screw Tsunami for temper for right now. I mean, I didn't think they were ever going to bring back Tommy after that because that was like Cartoon Network itself. That was like the Fossil Zone for Imaginary Friends like hosting it. Yep. 
Exactly, dude. Like I, cause uh, every every Saturday or whatever, they would uh, excuse me, they would basically have a new movie or whatever, because every you know the whole month they were playing Miyazaki movies. Right. But um, yeah, like I'll send you the promos, cause I found all the old promos they had on YouTube and stuff, like the commercials and stuff like that. They're great, but um. Yeah, like that was that was around the same time as watching, you know, that Naruto thing, like the, you know, the Naruto New Year's marathon and stuff. Like they all, that was around the same time as the month of Miyazaki, and like we were all watching like, yeah, all these Miyazaki films and just blown away by them. Like you know, of course, I always watched like Kiki's Delivery Service as a kid, but I never knew they made other ones really. So like this was, I only I saw, I basically only knew of one other one, right? Which was the Cat Returns? Yeah. Movie. Yeah. Basically, like they had, I saw the Cat Returns at Blockbuster one time, and I'm like, this looks exactly like a Studio Ghibli film or something. I'm like, is it? But I never knew really. But I think it is actually. It was like made by the same studio or something. But that was the crazy thing. Is like. you know, it was just a great movie. It was just a great time to be around. Like, I, it's probably one of my favorite times, you know, for TV in general or just just living, I guess, even. But, like, we, uh, I had this one teacher, right? And she would, she basically was, like, almost getting the whole class involved in it, too. Like, watching this month of Miyazaki thing. And, like, she was, like, telling us, like, um, about you know, one of the movies, which was, um, you know, Princess Mononoke. Yeah, uh, wait, hold on, a teacher did this? Yeah, dude, like, I had this awesome, like, fifth grade teacher, and, like, she would, like, she was really into all that stuff, and, like, she, um, basically, like, told us about it, like, Princess Mononoke, she's like, have you guys seen Princess Mononoke? Like, she must have been a fan for quite some time. It's a great movie, and then, like, um, I'm like, no, I haven't seen it, but um, I really want to or whatever. And then I recommend it. Trust me, it is one of the greatest. Oh yeah, I've seen it now. I saw it now by now, but I'm saying talking about back then. But yeah, and then like that was one of the movie, one of the movies they played on the month of Miyazaki thing, and they basically yeah. like, you know, I was I saw like pretty much I saw Spirited Away. Okay, Spirited Away was the defining thing for me at that time. Mm. Which, it might even be my actual favorite Studio Ghibli movie. I'm not really sure yet. I haven't really decided. Like, what I kind of say is, like, even though Kiki's Delivery Service is, like, the first one I've seen, like, Spirited Away kind of has that special charm for me for that time. And it's, like, the one that kind of reignited my, you know, love for anime and stuff like that. But that was that's definitely one of my favorites, if not my actual favorite. But, um, and then, of course... One of the most underrated ones, I feel like, too, is Nausicaa. Nausicaa? Yeah, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Right, now I remember. That's an okay. insanely good movie, because that was, that was probably one of my other favorites that they showed. Like, Yeah, Na- Nausicaa Valley of the Wind, now that I remember, my god... She was just a pure badass at that time. <laughs> yeah, Reading like they had the best those... promos for that. They had the best commercials, but Yeah, I need to start looking at Castle in the Sky. I haven't seen that. I've seen it, yeah. but I don't remember much of it. I just bought that recently actually cuz I'm trying to collect some of them now, but Oh, you lucky bastard. You lucky lucky <laughs> bastard. <laughs> Ah! I've only bought the VHS because the VHSs are cheap. But um, yeah, it's a- how much time we do we have in the recording? Well, we're about halfway through it right now. I mean, we're gonna do it till like five or whatever, right? So that's true. Yeah, because here is actually the thing I must must say. Sure. All right. Yeah. Now. We discussed everything we could about, like, Toonami. Like, we know that Toonami basically is, like, the replacement. It's weird. I feel like Adult Swim and Toonami are, like, two... Like, Toonami is 
specifically reserved for anime only, and Adult Swim is reverse is reserved for our violent cartoons. Right. Do you know, definitely, you're absolutely right. And then, yeah, I guess we can talk about Adult Swim now if you want or something. Yes. You want to know why, folks? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Why? We're talking about Adult Swim. Now, when I first saw Adult Swim, I had no freaking idea what the hell I was watching. <laughs> Let me explain. I heard this background music with nothing but a pool full of old people swimming around in it as the intro and outro of the actual thing. Mm-hmm. And then, out of nowhere, we finally see like shows like home movies. Um, yeah, dude, that's one of my favorites. That's the thing, though. I didn't necessarily like it because I thought it was kind of boring and kind of weird. <laughs> it is. I mean, that's. I guess that's kind of the point of it. But it's like, I liked it. Yeah. I like the I really like the art style of it the most, like the whole animation, the wiggly lines and everything. Well, that that is true. I will give you that because that's the thing too. Like when really putting it all into perspective, like God, there was so much on Adult Swim. I remember looking into mm-hmm. because remember, Toonami at that time. I don't remember. Like, I remember, like, Tsunami was, like, the Saturday night stuff that we were looking at. Like, at first, it appeared in the afternoon. Like, literally right after school, showing us the most time of badass animation of all time anime at that, at, at that time. Right. And, yeah, like, and it, like the One Piece love. game, too. We'd play this shit out of that One Piece game, Grand Battle. I think I remember playing it. I don't remember what it looked like. It's awesome. But, it's like, okay, it has... Basically, the characters look like Chibi. Chiba wasn't that the characters? Wait, wasn't that the voices that had the four kids' voices on there? Yeah, it did because that was what. Oh was, god, that, that was what was out at the time. But yeah, I played it too. I remember four kids dub was hilarious in a way because it's like, I mean, even though it's like people consider it to be bad or whatever, like I found it hilarious. Like I actually preferred Sanji's voice in that because it it was just so weird to hear it. Like Sanji, Sanji. Well, let me explain. Here's the thing that you might not know. You know about Guts and Berserk? Um, what about him? That voice actor that played Zoro, that was originally his English voice actor for Berserk. <laughs> That's crazy. You understand? It actually was a lot better. <laughs> you understand? It actually fit Guts quite well. <laughs> I am not joking you at all. Nice. Like, but um, but yeah. What were, what were you saying about Adult Swim, though? Okay, now Adult Swim. Now, if I remember correctly, I don't remember what shows actually appeared at that time. Like, um, let me think. Uh, let's see. Okay, about 19 years this thing has been going on now. Mm-hmm. It's the nighttime identity of Cartoon Network and was established alternative programming during the late night hours when Cartoon Network's primary target audience, children between ages 7 and 15, would normally be sleeping. <laughs> now, here's the problem with that. What they didn't realize is that I would be staying up late to watch it. And me as well, including, <laughs> like, Adult Swim as well. And you know the sad thing about, like, the Tsunami Review by the Nostalgia Critic, if I may say? What's that? They didn't review every single show that was on there. It was just insulting a little bit to me. Uh. A little bit. Like, they didn't even mention Outlaw Star. That pissed me off. I was like... Are you serious? 
How could you not mention Outlaw Star? I know you had to make a 40 minute video, but why? Well, that was the thing is like, yeah, they would always, they would have like the most, um, like the edgier anime on Adult Swim. And they would have right. kind of like the more kid oriented ones on Tsunami, even though they did have their moments. You know what I mean? True, true. Because like, I'm yeah. trying to remember what they. Hmm? Okay, here it is. It was called the pool era, basically. That's where I remember seeing it for the first time. It was around 2001. Right. Now, I think I... 91. I think I was 10 or 11 back then. Right. Now, what I remembered was that the shows that were on during that time... Let me think. If I remember correctly... Jeez, the pool era. Okay. I think it's showing me that right now. Yeah, I don't know why they showed the pool era. That was weird. Hmm. But I think I might know what you're talking about. Like, how they yeah. used to have, like, an Adult Swim um, promo where it's showing, like, the actual pool. Or it's saying actual, like, Adult Swim and it's, like, an actual pool. Yeah, and then there was like <sighs> there's the inner title cards. I don't remember that. It was weird. But I remembered Adult Swim first like being like you know, let me see. Now if I remember now if I remember correctly Jeez, I don't even remember like what shows were even on at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Like okay, what year? Like what? Oh, what? this is 2001, all the way through. Now here it goes. Okay, now the first thing they did was Space Coast to Coast home movies, and then. The first anime Cowboy Bebop they ever did, or the anime they did, was Cowboy Bebop. Right. And then, in 2004, when the Initiative Card era was started, there was talk between Hunger Force, The Black Show. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. I love that. It was a weird guy like, da ba da ba 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 da ba 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 Yeah. <laughs> There's a well, show dude, called Hill, but I don't remember what that was. Dude, like, here's, um... Here's some stories I have about it, right? Like, I actually found Adult Swim before I... Okay, here's the thing. I can't really even remember what I found first, whether I found... Wow, oh my god, I remember Mission Hill now. Jesus. <laughs> I just looked it up really quick and was like, oh my god, that's what that was back then? Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. What, what were you saying? I was just saying, like, um, you know, like, I told you that Dragon Ball GT story already, where I think that was actually on, like, Adult Swim back in the day, mm -hmm. but, so that was probably the first thing I actually found first was Adult Swim, actually, but, um, probably Dragon Ball GT might have been the first thing I saw on it, but, um, further down the line, though, around the era of, like, the DS and, like, kind of around when Mario Kart DS was around and when that right. came out. You know, I had this one friend, Austin, right? And, uh -huh. um, you know, like, uh, you know, I piled around with him a lot. And, uh, you know, we hung out a lot. And this was around this probably, probably before or around the same time, maybe a year or two before the, um, you know, that whole tsunami thing I was telling you about, about the Naruto thing, about a little bit before that whole Naruto New Year's thing came out. Right, right. Like, I, you know, I was watching, like, Adult Swim with him. Like, I slept over his house, and, um, you know, we pretty much, probably one of my greatest memories, actually, I have is, um, you know, we just actually slept, I slept over his house, and we just stayed up all night playing, like, Mario Kart, DS, and Nintendogs. And, like, he had this, he had this, his room set up was, like, you know, he had this, um, 
you know, his bed, like, kind of, like, in, uh, against the wall or whatever, and he had, like, this leopard gecko, which we would also play with a little bit, but he, uh, had this, like, kind of small TV that was, like, above his bed or whatever, so uh-huh. we were both, like, sitting on his bed, just, like, you know, watching all these, like, adult swim things and everything, and, like, we, that's how we, um, you know, we knew about adult swim, so we somehow, you know, turned that channel on, and, like, one of the greatest memories I have of Adult Swim, right, is the first time that I actually saw, like, the original Full Metal Alchemist. Because, mm. as like, we turned on the channel, and as soon as we turned on the channel, it was Full Metal Alchemist was playing, and it was, like, that very first intro scene where, like, you know, um, it, it was that whole se- that whole intro sequence where you know, Edward and Al are sitting there and like, it was the first episode where they basically are, um, they lose their limbs, you know, Edward, it was just like a scene where like, you know, that scene where Edward, um, his arm like gets like cut off, you know, it it gets ripped off basically. And it's like, you see all that blood and everything. Mm. And then, uh, you know, Al's body gets bound to the armor or whatever. Yeah. Like, that's that was, like, the first time I saw that Full Metal Alchemist. And then, like, that was just a great, great memory I have. Like, we're, I was just, like, we were just, like, absolutely blown away by, like, the animation for, like, this thing. Like, we, we just couldn't believe our eyes that, like, there would be, there could actually be something that violent looking in, like, a cartoon. You know what I mean? Like... Not a cartoon, well, but I an anime. Like we were. By the way, hmm. really quick, yeah. have you ever seen Wolf's Rain, Witch Hunter Robin, Trinity Blood, Erica Seven? Yes. Yeah, I've seen. I've seen a lot of them. Now, here's the thing, though. These shows at the runtime. Okay. Yeah. Now. I was trying to remember what they were actually showing. Now, at that time, a list of broadcasts by all this. Now, there was like, okay, some shows were still like evolving at that time. Now, I don't remember. If um, like it has been such a long, long, long time mm-hmm. because I forgot what shows actually appeared on there and what didn't. Like, for example, say like um. There was some stuff like, say, um, like there was a weird show I remember looking at one point, one episode where it was called Lucy, the Daughter of the Devil. Okay. Um, crap, it's been a while. Shoot. Because remember... I'm looking at a list right now from my side of what was on there, but it doesn't tell me what was first broadcasted, like, on list during those eras, remember? Yeah, I know what you mean. That's the thing I don't understand. Like, they should at least show you that, but they never really, um... I don't know. Like, that's the thing about, um... But Adult Swim, like, I'm looking at it right now, and I'm trying to find what shows were on there. Right. Oh, well, they they definitely did have, like, Trinity Blood on there and everything. Oh, they did. Don't get me wrong. They did. Like, that was the other thing, too, is, like, um, I guess wrapping up with that story about the friend, like, um, beforehand, I, I guess I kind of forgot to tell what we did before that night when I slept over. Like, before then, on the same night or something, like, uh, mm-hmm. We basically went to Blockbuster, right? You know, back when Blockbuster was actually still around. Oh, wait, you told me this, right? I don't remember if I told you or not, but 
basically we went to Blockbuster and um, basically we just browsed the store and like saw the stuff they had and we were gonna like rent a movie or something. But uh, I don't. Wait, think hold, on, wait ever... hold on, reiterate. What what night was this? This was the same night where I basically slept over the friend's house and watched Full Metal Alchemist. Okay, okay. I just want I just want to double check. But like beforehand, like we basically, um, you know, we went to Blockbuster and we're gonna rent a movie or something like that or a game, I think. But we didn't actually end up doing getting anything. I I don't think because we couldn't really find anything we wanted. But you know, we saw like when we were there, right? We we found like their little like anime section or something for the movies and like right yeah. before our eye right before our eyes was just like basically a copy of um the original ghost in the shell movie or something sitting on the shelf and you know we're just sitting there as like a bunch of like fifth graders or something and like we were just really surprised to see it like we're you know like we weren't surprised we weren't really like expecting to see like a picture of like a half naked woman on the front cover <laughs> so like we're just sitting there like staring at like Matoko's like cleavage or whatever on this cover of Ghost in the Shell like we just couldn't even like believe it like well believe it you saw it yeah but um, just... we we're like we both just looked at it and like you know we just laughed at it basically we're just like <laughs> we just looked at each other and laughed and then left after that but um yeah, and then we went back home to his place and, like, played, like, and, like, for, I have this, like, it's crazy, right? It's crazy what things make you think of because, like, there's the Cheap Cheap Beach song in uh, Mario Kart DS. Like, I always associate that song with Full Metal Alchemist now because we literally watched that while we were, like, playing Mario Kart DS together on, like, DS Download Play. So, like, mm -hmm. I, I basically always remember that song with that now. Yeah, I like that's the thing about me. Like, I, like I keep telling people, I still don't remember much of the Nintendo era. Mm -hmm. Like, I know what some systems are, like GameCube, uh, Game Boy Advance. Yeah. But the thing is, what I don't remember are um, like some of the stuff that came out then because I was still playing my PlayStation. I was playing PlayStation One. Well, actually, no. Actually, there's another funny story about that. PlayStation 1 was my very first PlayStation I ever played ever. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the hell we got it from. I don't remember. Right. Um, what happened? But there was a time where I didn't just play Crash Bandicoot Warped or Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Crash Back. Mm -hmm. I was also playing a collection of game demos that Sony had at that one point. <laughs> nice. There was Mobile Suit Gundam. Oh, nice. like on the P official PlayStation Magazine demos? Yeah, like one, yeah. Yeah. Where you fought against a robot and against another robot... You wait a minute. Was that um? Are you talking about the game Gundam Battle Assault? I think so. That might have been it. That's like that's the one where it's like the fighting game, like a, a it's basically yeah. like a fighting game. You know, head to head combat. I remember getting pissed off losing once, and I was like, Mrah. "Dude, I love that game." Like I, I only played that game probably, uh, you know, Gundam Battle Assault two probably over my friend's house one time. But. My God, I'm not gonna lie. That part time during my youth, I was a nice kid, but I was also a fucking brat, and mostly. How so? I hated myself for that for being a, a dumbass back then. How were you a brat? Well, let's see. There was this one time I was at this bar with my mom. Well, it was a restaurant actually. Yeah. I was trying to watch like a new episode of Ed and Eddie that aired around eight thirty, maybe seven thirty at that time. Mm -hmm. Some guys changed the game, and my brain was weird. I literally acted out by leaving the table as fast as I could, went straight to out of the restaurant, 
in like a big huff and puff. My mom had to come drag, kind of had to come bring me back in. And they did apologize for changing the channel all of a sudden because they didn't know I was watching that. And I don't know. I, I regretted that day because I realized I was like a selfish brat back then. Yeah. So going back into it now, I realized that my actions were because you, you were a kid. You didn't know any better whether. Right. I don't know. It, it was very odd to think that way. Like even as a sometimes as a teenager, I was still a bit of a brat myself. Uh -huh. But I learned to just grow out of that shit and just better myself as a person. Yeah. And I think sometimes when you're a kid, you um you at first had like a situation where you caused like an attitude situation. I, I well I, I don't know if I should call it that, but um. Where you basically, um, God, how do I say this? Um, God, it, it's, I'm trying to think, like, um, <laughs> it's okay. Okay, when you're a kid and you're trying to, like, um, figure out what to, um, Shit. Okay. Okay. When you're a kid and you made mistakes and then realize that change the ideas. Okay. Not the ideas. Fuck. God. I lost my train of thought now, man. Damn it. I knew this was going to happen one day. Okay. okay. <clears throat> when you were a kid and you look at stuff in real life. Like, it wasn't even kid shows that I watched as a kid that inspired me to, like, better myself. I, in a strange way, had to learn how to do that on my own. Yeah. And the thing is... And uh, what's interesting, though... When you're trying to actually, like, kids don't know any better because we're practically just still learning from society on how to be better people. Mm -hmm. there's, no thing, there's no such thing as truly, like, a bad kid. There's only such thing as bad parenting. Right. I mean, my mom did the best she could with what she had because she was always working as a nurse just to make sure that she and I were still provided and everything was still going to be okay. Dang, I dropped my ball on the desk. <laughs> Sorry about that loud noise. I guess the, the, the recorder got that too. I'm not sure. It probably did. But um, it's fine. On, on that note, actually, hold on. Can you check out the recorder and see if it's actually getting my voice in, in there? Hello? Uh, you mean the recording? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I know it is. Okay, I just want to be sure. Okay, so... If not, I mean, this whole chat is not recorded then. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I'm Please sure tell me it's recorded this whole time. fine. I've already tested it before, so... Thank God. I thought I was, like, going to say, oh, my God, they're all like, that hard work. We, we're, if we were to have to record this all again, like, that would be insane. But, anyway, yeah, like, um... What were we saying? Oh, yeah. When, when, when you're a kid and you realize that you become a better person for learning on how to be a better person in general, you kind of forget the fact that you made mistakes as a kid and you grow up and evolve from them and you become better as time progresses. It's right. just, I don't know, it's just really interesting how people would actually think. Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, it's like trying to actually, like, um, understand how things work in society, but as you grow older, 
you realize that, you know what? I will admit I made these mistakes and I have to learn to live with them and be better for it. And the reason why I say it like that is because when you act stubborn and you act immature, act immature, that's just a kid being a kid. Right. I mean, thank God that I wasn't like one of those crazy kids that like that like um I don't know. I, I can't really describe describe it, I think. Uh like one of those like really sociopathic uh, like people, you know? Yeah. I mean when I was a kid, I was like um like I wasn't mean let me think. Um But um well I was just gonna say too, um I guess like wrapping up with the whole adult swim thing for now is like you know, of course we're probably gonna talk about it again on the show or whatever, but like Yeah, um, eventually, yeah. We, yeah we like, there's tons I of stuff. Originally... But yeah, like what would you what were you saying? You know what? Well there 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 was um one show I in particular am very big fan of in Adult Swim right now, besides Rick and Morty. Right. Primal, but we'll talk about that like on our I mean, next. I was gonna do. Like, I was gonna say like we can talk about like that next week or something if you want. Yeah, that'll be perfect. We can definitely do that. But um. Or yeah. hey, better yet, you want to talk about this Friday? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like that's what I mean. Like on Friday and then the next show actually. Yeah, folks, let me explain. We need to do this only once every week. <laughs> yeah. And then um. Yeah, we'll be releasing it weekly, but we're, who knows when we're actually going to record them all. But yeah, um, but if we somehow do end up like having like uh, if we do have like uh two different like um, <laughs> like say for example that we um. Okay, let me think. Um, but, uh, yeah, what I was going to say is wrapping up with it for now is like, yeah, base, so basically, yeah, I told you the whole Adult Swim story about how I saw Full Metal and all that with the friend, but then right, pretty much right. right after that or whatever, like, and all those times I told you about, like, I was pretty much hooked on it ever since then, right? And I, uh, you know, stayed up late and I knew every night at sa- every Saturday night or whatever it would come on or whatever, or, or even every night for Adult Swim, but... You know, I'd specifically stay up, you know, almost every night that I could and just stay up watching, like, Adult Swim because, like, it was just, like, the the go-to thing, like, the badass thing for you to watch or whatever. And, like, I would just lose a lot of nights of sleep staying up late watching that because, like, I always knew it was, like, it was basically the thing that I always thought, like, I would get in trouble for watching. But And I think that partially added to the pretty much the interest factor like that would that part of partially that's what made me want to watch it is because i knew it was like almost quote-unquote bad you know what i mean yeah but um like yeah i was all i remember of course i do remember trinity blood like like you were saying like you know i remember this okay there's like this specific scene i'm like pretty soon i'm about i'm actually about to go back and watch trinity blood after i buy it or something so Mm. But, um, yeah, there's, like, a specific scene I remember, and it actually, like, that was another mind-blower for me for, like, anime and stuff like that. Like, I remember, like, staying up late and uh, watching it in my room, basically, and um, that's when I had cable or whatever, and I was watching it on this, like, crappy old silver tube TV that I had, and, like um, yeah, like, there was Trinity Blood on, and uh, there was, like, this one episode with, like, it's like that blonde lady or whatever and like she's like it was like this like scene where she was like nude in a bath scene or something and like i'm just sitting there watching it when i was like in like fifth grade or something like but um yeah that was that and then like basically that of course and then i also remember watching a lot of like uh, you know ghosts in the shell standalone complex too like that was pretty much one of the most exciting things I saw. Like, I, I remember, like, another time I was, like, 
staying yeah. up till like probably like 3 a.m. or whatever, like down in my family room, just watching like Adult Swim, trying to like sneak it on the TV and make sure it's not like up too loud so anybody could hear it. And then I'm just, like, sitting there watching, like, standalone complex or whatever. But, um... True, that's probably true. one of my other favorite memories for it. But, um... Yeah, that's all I can really remember about it for now. But, yeah, it's just... The, and, of course, you know, of course you got shows like Metalocalypse. And, like, I remember watching a lot of that. And, like... And, uh... Oh, yes. Let's see, um... I always knew, I always saw yeah. titles too, right? I always saw these like with I had I used to have Comcast cable and like you can always mm. see like the listings on it and um you know I, I would always see the listings for things like Samurai Champloo. I'm like, what the hell is this? Like Samurai Champloo? Oh like, like, God, what yes, that, I like what is that? It? Like what is a Champloo? Like is it is this like a play on words? It's supposed to be like shampoo. I'm like what? But I. But no, I, no, but what it actually means is what it champ what champloo actually means is gumbo. Gumbo? Yeah, because the the creator or one of the characters like told us that's what it means. It means gumbo because it's supposed to be a mixture of um like cultures. That makes sense now that I think about it. Yeah, because they have like that whole hip hop thing in that guy Shingo too. The rapper Shingo too, who's and new job s. I got you, man. Do the intro or whatever, but um, that's what he said in the show. But I'll, I'll actually send you that radio show or whatever he did explaining that. But like, yeah, that was another one, and I remember seeing like the Samurai Champloo game they had for the PS2. Wait, is this who you're talking about, Keiichi Fujiwara? No, no, that's another guy. We're, I'm going to talk about next. Hmm. Okay with you but yeah basically like um that was the and i remember seeing the game but i i never could afford the game because you know it was like 50 dollars, so i wasn't gonna waste money on it really because i wanted to get other things but and now i remember seeing that adult swim logo on the back of the game and it was pretty cool but um yeah that's it's just a lot of really great memories like of course aqua teen hunger force and stuff like that you know i always loved staying up watching those losing so many nights of sleep watching those and of course harvey birdman attorney at law was another great one too i was always i was always like wondering what the heck that show was like i never really knew if that show was actually like associated with like the artist who created like wolverine or not yeah because he looks like him you know he has like that similar head thing or whatever <clears throat> but uh yeah i guess next if you want to just like talk a little bit about maybe our favorite games or something or okay what was your favorite game or one of them I mean, Any I can tell you my favorite my number one favorite game of all time probably is kingdom hearts 2 <laughs> I can definitely explain. that definitely makes sense because like the way the game play mechanics work, the way it blends in, it's yeah, yeah. Like, it just blew my mind when I played it. Like I just couldn't even believe. Like I just couldn't believe it. You know, it's just like of course I played like the first one and everything, but it just like it pretty much lived up to every expectation I could ever have in a sequel. Yeah, like. Like, it was just, like, the most anticipated, like, sequel that I wanted to play and everything. Yeah. But, um, like, I mean, besides that, like, I, I mean, right, I'm still working on, like, probably my top five, actually, games that, that I have. But, like, I could tell you, like, my top four games right now. Like, it would definitely be that with number one. You know, Kingdom Hearts 2 is number one. And then... Probably, um, let's see. Who's number two? Honestly, I, I can't really number the rest of them right now. Like, but let's see. I'd probably put, like, either Crash Bandicoot Warp. Here's the next, here's the next, like, four contenders, right? Crash Bandicoot Warped, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, and Ape Escape for the PS1. Yeah, I mean... Those are my favorites. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Are we talking about the ones where they're like 3D models and where Shadow showed up? 
Yeah, exactly. I thought they were PlayStation 2. Nope, they're, uh, no, like, okay, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 are Dreamcast games originally. Right, okay. And they came out with the GameCube ports, which are enhanced versions, but debatably, the Dreamcast versions are still better because they have better lighting effects. Even though, like, mm-hmm. basically, the okay, the GameCube has a higher polygon count for the character models, but the lighting is better in Dreamcast. Right. It's kind of a matter of preference, really. Like, GameCube has a more cel-shaded look to it, sort of. See, folks, what I tell you, I'm still a dum-dum when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> but, um, Crash Bandicoot Warped, you know, that's a PlayStation 1 game. And same with Ape Escape, because, like, you know, but I played a lot of PlayStation 1 as a kid, and, like, of course I have to add those, because, like, Ape Escape, dude, if have, if you never played Ape Escape, like, I gotta let you, like, borrow it from me or sometime, like, you know, at least once sometime to play it, because it's, like, it's just an incredible... I mean, game. if I have a PlayStation 1, I don't have one. Well, that's what I'm saying, like, I'll lend it to you or something. I mean, I can come by your place and just play a bit of it. Yeah, oh, but, yeah you can play it over here, too, but, um, but, yeah, dude, like, Ape Escape is, like, it really does have, like, a, a really good charm to it. Like, it almost has a similar dynamic that Kingdom Hearts had before Kingdom Hearts. You know what I mean? Like, it, it had, like, basically, mm-hmm. there's these two characters in it, Spike and Jake. And they're almost, like, similar to, like, a Sora and Riku or, like, a Naruto and Sasuke sort of thing. Because, mm. like, basically what it is is, like, Jake becomes, like, the rival to, yeah. you know, Spike. But the gameplay is, like, just really fun. Like, it's just a great game. Like, I, you just have to experience it for yourself. Like, it was it was one of the first games that actually took advantage of the um, the PlayStation 1's DualShock using the, using the analog sticks. Mm. So, like, it's heavy on that. And, of course, like, Sonic Adventure, like... You know, both of those games, I've played through those games, like, just so many times by now. Probably, like, probably over, like, ten times each. Yeah. Like, they're just, like, there are games I can always replay, because, like, they just have, like, incredible stories to them, like, and the gameplay is great. Like, I, like, I've heard news about, like, a remake or something, about, like, Sonic Adventure 1, that they might even make a remake of it. Hmm. But, Let's see. Any, they, any other? Could warped. You know, of course, that one's a great one too. Like, I mean, I had so much, so many memories playing that game. Hey, I actually did too. Dr. Nefarious Tropin, <laughs> Tony, Tony the Tiger. Jesus Christ. But yeah, what about you? Like, what would be your like top five? Honestly, I would have a um, top eight at this point, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, like that's fine. Okay, let's see. I mean, yeah, I could do a top eight. Like, if I were to add more games, like, okay, there's this other game for PS One I really love called. Uh, it's called Tomba. Tomba. It's or the Japanese version is called Tombi. It's basically like this little pink-haired guy. Oh yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I, I see it now. I remember. Yeah, Actually, I think I remember playing a little bit of that game. That game, dude. I, those, are, those are great games. Like, I rem- I rented the first game, and then like I never I never could uh, play it again. But I I have the demo of uh, Tomba Two though, and I played Tomba Two the most because of that demo disc. Like, I would play those demo discs to death. I wonder if they're ever gonna bring back Tomba. Probably not. Dude, I wish they would. But yeah, what about yours though, dude? Oh, right, right. Okay. Um, let's see. My some of the games I remember liking the best would be Okay, number eight. This would go to Okay, number eight would go to the... Shoot, it's been a while. Okay, okay, I I got it now. Number eight would go straight 
to the God. Why am I why why am I doing this right now? What what is wrong with me? Okay. Um, <laughs> shit. God, it's been a while. Okay. All right. I'll give my first top five. Number one game, my favorite game of all time would be. Legitimately, I would dare say I would say it would be Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Nice. Now, here's a reason. Now, granted, it's one of my favorites of all time. I... I probably should recorrect myself because I don't think I have truly any top like like number one favorite at all. But or in this case, let me rephrase that. I think it'd be better to say it like this. The reason I consider that my top number one game, in my opinion, for this video is because of the way the game is designed. Right. How far the world's been expanded, how far how much you can craft your own food. And your own potions. It's too bad you can't craft your own clothing, though. Uh -huh. Or your own weapons. Right. Which you know, it's fine. You gotta get what you can. You gotta get what you can take. Uh -huh. And you basically don't even have to use a master sword. You can just use whatever weapon you found to defeat Ganon. That is a clever, clever right. idea or mechanic they put into the game. Just use whatever weapon you can to defeat Ganon. Nothing else. <laughs> Although people are preferably going to want to get the mass, their hands on the master sword because it lasts longer than all the other weapons in the in the game. Mm -hmm. If you do it right, and if you let the energy refill itself, right. Let me think. All right, let me think. Okay, so here's what I think number two should be. Number two, in this case, would definitely be the Kingdom Hearts franchise. Mm. Because one, Disney and Final Fantasy put together is – now hear me out. It is a franchise. If I remember speaking with you earlier when we first met, it's a franchise that should not work. Yeah. But because it's Unimura and the team behind this, it works perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Kingdom Hearts 3 is still going to be debatable until this day, even further in the future because of all the stuff that was implemented. Hopefully they'll recorrect those mistakes with Kingdom Hearts 4 whenever that shows up. Right. But yeah, nevertheless, that's interesting to think about when it will actually. But in the long run, like when it comes down to understanding how how, how these games actually would be, just like giving a certain identity of their own, like. It works in ways to where Kingdom Hearts, yes, Kingdom Hearts is all about that stuff about the heart and everything else. And it does sound kind of cheesy and corny, yeah. but what it makes up for in that it makes up for in bass fight scenes, some gameplay, most of the gameplay is what people will draw people in. The yeah. fact that Donald and Goofy are actually fighting alongside you, which is kind of both awesome and hilarious at the same time. Mm -hmm. And sim simply saying the music really helps sells it too, and it's a great soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Number three would be the Uncharted franchise. Nice. My favorite, well, my favorite Uncharted of all time would be Uncharted Four. Sweet, yeah, I love Uncharted. I remember, like, when the first, like, when Uncharted first came out, like, I was. Um... I was really excited to play it because it was like one of the first PS3 games that was actually like incredibly yeah. good looking. Like it just had amazing looking graphics. Like the demo was just 
I mean, it had like mouth watering water. Wait, m- mouth mouth watering water? I'm sorry, I dozed like, off had, for a second. Like I'm saying, like I'm saying, it was just really good looking. Like the the water in the game, it was just like mouth watering. Like that's how good it looked. Oh my god! Oh, that's right. Yeah. Jeez, Uncharted, the Uncharted franchise. Yeah, my favorite Uncharted game. Actually, there's two of them, and ironically, it's both two and four. Yeah, dude. For me, it's definitely two is like my favorite in the series. But then again, four is four does have a really killer um, story too. Like that whole thing they introduced with their brother and everything. Mm, yeah, Troy Baker playing as as his brother is fucking phenomenal. Yeah, exactly. Like, my like, God, like, and he's younger. I would say two is my favorite in the series because uh, I mean that was just a great time for gaming. Like, I just I can't even believe it. Like that was. I mean, that was probably one of the most uh, anticipated sequels that people were hoping for, and, like, then they actually got it, and, like, they came out with, like, that whole, like, online and everything for it, and, like, it was just amazing. Like, I remember playing that online so much. Like, I actually, here's the thing, like, I actually got in the, um, in the Uncharted 2 beta, the online multiplayer beta before the game came out. Because there, there was a way where you could do that if you, like, basically, I think, like, pre-ordered it or something, right? So, um, yeah, I remember, like, playing the beta a lot and, like, thinking, like, damn, this multiplayer is awesome. And then, like, yeah. I pretty much played that multiplayer a lot. And then, um... I have not had a chance to do that. Well, you should maybe play Uncharted 4's multiplayer. I'm not sure if it's still live or not. It probably is, right? <laughs> It probably isn't anymore, judging by the years. But um. Yeah, but it's just okay. a killer game. Like I love the whole snow theme effect and everything. Like of course, Naughty Dog is a great game, and like I remember, like they were like actually like around that time when Uncharted Three came out or whatever. They the whole Naughty Dog fan base was like actually demanding a Jack and Daxter game, a new Jack and Daxter game. But it never really happened because they actually had mm. um. That's true. They Jack have, and like, canceled concept art that they released of like an actual next gen Jack and Daxter game or something for the PS3 or something like that, but it never got made. Yeah, that's it that's actually fair. Canceled. Let's see. What will be my fourth favorite at this point? Um, and for those who are probably wondering, no, it's not going to be Assassin's Creed. It's going to be Sly Cooper. Oh, yeah, dude. Of course, Sly Cooper. I love those games. Yes! That was the only one. But then again, I really am not. The Sly Cooper franchise, in general, is by far one of my favorite series of all time. Now, I know I have mixed um, favorites in this conversation, basically. Because, let's face it, I can't even say that Breath of the Wild can be my, t- my number one favorite, but as of now, that's my thought process as of right now. Right. I like uh, the yeah, games I like. Honestly, I haven't, I haven't played Breath of the Wild just yet, actually, but uh, I'm definitely going to play it soon. And um, like I, that's the thing is this summer I'm actually trying to actually play more Zelda games because I'm planning on probably replaying Ocarina of Time again. Mm-hmm. I played that once and beat it, and then I'm probably gonna play Majora's Mask actually and beat that for the first time. Because even though like I rented it a bunch of times as a kid, I uh, and played it a few times, I never actually beat it. So yeah, I might play those two games over the summer. Yeah, I would too, honestly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's your fourth. And what would be your fifth or whatever? Okay. Even though My I could fifth? stop there technically because I only gave a top. Well, actually, I think I did say five. But. We'll stick with that for now because we might do more. Um, we might do more game discuss. We actually should do more game discussions on our next video on Friday anyway. Oh, yeah, we will. Like I'll start coming up with the new topics already for us. If you want, and you can too. Yeah, okay. Um, let's see. And then, of course, we'll have, encourage the audience to basically start coming up with topics in the comments for us. 
Yeah, because here's the thing. Um, they really, the, if folks listen, if you do hear this out, and listen, folks, about that, um, about that animal situation I discussed earlier in our conversation. Like I said, I was just a kid. If that affects you in some way of your opinion of me, I understand. But um, the reason I rather discuss this is because I think some along the line, someone, whether it's someone on chat or, or not, or whether it's people who want audiences or viewers who watch this, I believe it's better to discuss that I have made mistakes like that. You know? I mean, you agree with me on that one, right, Eric? Yeah. But despite all that, I still, like I said, want to be a better person. I want to deliver as much as I can with the things I'm doing now, what I'm trying to establish, what I'm trying to give to people is not necessarily just entertainment or even a discussion of this um, event. Well, I want to say event of this podcast that me and him are doing. And yes, these um, podcasts will be edited for now. Now, Eric, I'm not sure if you still want to do live, if we find a location to do these on live somewhere. Possibly, like it's still something we're talking about. So we, we are still discussing that, and we also plan on getting some of our other friends in on this if they want to. Yeah, like we're hoping to have a few guest stars on the show at least pretty soon. So because I think if we have more people on the podcast, it would not necessarily just expand the entertainment, but expand something that means something to everyone else when they look at our videos and stuff. The idea of this channel is not necessarily just to talk about these topics at, at random or anything else. We want people to realize that even like their opinions matter too. Like say that you want to put like your favorite tsunami moment or your favorite adult swim moment, or even your favorite games. Let us know in the comments below about, about all this because we are actually curious about this stuff too because the idea of interest in this case, the culture of interest, is that we find interest not necessarily in what we discuss, but what you, the viewers, actually want to bring in as well. Yeah, exactly. And I was kind of um, and the thing off is, until the end of the episode to actually like, you know, tell them that. But yeah, I mean, this is a good time to tell you, I guess. So like, yeah, I mean, like, feel like he said, feel free to like comment like all of your ideas and like what your favorites are for all of these like topics we're talking about. Because like that's the thing. And bring like, in we want to know what you think too. And I will say this: if you do want to bring in some political ideas, fine. But we might not respond much of those if we don't know much about them. It's not that we don't care about. Them the news or the topics being discussed in political matters, we we're just not that big on it because that's not what this channel is about. Yeah. If you want to bring it up, sure, we'll look into it and for at this time we're simply just trying to just do things our way for now. And hopefully like the reason I rather discuss some of the stuff I talked about, even my own personal stuff in the cases of what happened with me on that situation was simple because I rather be honest about my mistakes, whether it's being a kid, a teenager or anything else like that either. And this is why we simply have to just keep going, hopefully moving forward. And I do hope you look at our channel in a positive way. And to let you guys know that despite this um, pandemic, or as I like to call it, to both have a big laugh out of it, well, I wouldn't say laugh at the situation, but to merely just call it jokingly the Barney's birthday surprise. <laughs> the thing is, folks, I do know this is very hard, and I'm sorry that we all are going through this together. But I really do hope you can give our channel a, ch our channel a chance to help get you through the day, 
to make you feel good about, you know, having a simple good day, coming home, watching our recordings and just laugh your ass off, whether we're funny or not. I mean, I'm not that funny. Or simply just relating to our topics, putting your own topics of what you want to discuss and have us discuss for you into the channel as well. Exactly. Because I believe everyone should do this. If you talk about some things to get your mind off this and this does help, then I'm proud of our channel for what we're doing. We're trying to simply just help people. Not necessarily just, it's not necessarily just for us. Exactly. It's also to help you guys talk stuff out to distract you from not necessarily just the realities of the, of the pandemic itself, but realities of your own personal issues. Right. We don't need to know anything too crazy, anything too personal, I would say, but just let you know that whatever topics you want to discuss with, we'll do it. Okay. And in this case, if you do like our, our channel, please follow us on Twitter at the Cauldron. At um, crap, I messed it up. Okay, um, let me rephrase it again. <laughs> it's okay. If you, if you like the video and want to comment, please comment and subscribe. But if you also want to follow us, we have a Twitter and an Instagram account on. So like our Twitter is called the uh, Cauldron of Interest, or you could just search up the Cauldron of Interest probably and find it, but. We'll be we'll have links for all these below, and then on uh, on Instagram, our account is um, the Cauldron of Interest. Okay, so folks, basically you heard it from Eric here. If you want, you can subscribe to our channel if all of you want. You can leave a comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do. You can also follow us under Twitter, the Cauldron of Interest, and Instagram, the Cauldron of Interest. Yep, and, uh, and yeah, we'll have links below to, uh, you know, if you're interested in uh, checking us out on those pages, because, you know, that's where you'll be able to find all the, um, basically, links to our channel here, and, um, you know, any kind of other updates that we might post, so. Yeah, indeed. We will definitely keep doing this, and please look forward to our, technically, this would be our, um, Eric, I think our first video here is going to be, like, given tomorrow, or is it going to be the day after? Um, well, I might try to, like, work on the video tomorrow or something and upload it tomorrow or something like that. Yeah, let me know about that, too. Yeah, I will. I'll let you know when it's up. And then, um, yeah. But pretty um, much, I guess the last two topics, like, if you were done talking about that, um, there would be, um... The, you were wondering about the KG Fujiwara guy, right? You know what? Um, are you able to edit that part of our subscriptions that of the subscribing part to the end of the video, or do you want to like? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can edit it or whatever, but we can just say it again. Yeah, because we do need to cut that um, subscribe part out first if we. Because I thought we were just done there for a second, like, automatically, but that's just me being, a, like I said, a moron. Um, <laughs> it's okay. We'll just say it again, or, like, not again, but we'll just, like, kind of mention it, or I can change it around or something. I mean, we can mention it again this one time. I mean, all you got to yeah, do is just, like, fine. We'll just mention it again at the end, but um, it's kind of better to mention it twice anyway, I guess, but so people know. But, yeah, the, anyway, the, the last two things, they're not going to be that long, I guess, just a little bit longer. Like, the uh, like the KG Fujiwara guy, like, if you, do you know who he is, dude? Not completely, no. Okay, so basically, like, he was, like, essentially, like, this famous voice actor, this famous Japanese voice actor, right? Okay, like, he's voiced a lot of roles. Like, he's most famous for actually voicing the Japanese voice of Axel. In Kingdom Hearts. Really? Yeah, and he also voiced uh, Reno from Final Fantasy, the Japanese version, right? But he actually died recently. Oh, Jesus Christ. What did he die of? Um, I don't even... To tell you the truth, I, I don't remember what he died from. Um, let me see. Look it up real quick. I really hope the guy didn't die from the virus. No, no, he didn't die from the virus. 
I think cancer. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. I I remember now. He actually yeah he actually did have cancer. Oh man. But um, yeah, like he was uh, fifty five years old only. Jesus, to die that young or yeah, but, that middle. And that's why I just wanted to make um you know put him you know uh, talk about him in this video as like a little memorial to him. But um. I really got to start studying more about these actors and everything, whether it's foreign or domestic. I really yeah, got to start doing like, I'm, But I'm kind of surprised you didn't hear about him but or his death. But anyway, like, yeah, like I, I did know his, uh, well, I mean, his work because, like, here's the thing. Like, I did see some of the um, Japanese uh, Kingdom Hearts cutscenes, if not, like, most of them, actually, from especially from Kingdom Hearts 2 from um you know i used to watch those videos on youtube sometimes and, like i i do remember his uh he has re he's really good at voice acting like i remember his um like his especially axel's death scene that was like the craziest moment i remember but um mm. yeah it's just crazy to think about like he he voiced a ton of anime roles too like he did like i think like the character one of the characters in like this anime called like black cat and like uh you know a bunch of things like he pretty much always played like that type of character that like axel is sort of like that kind of like almost like a mentor type of character i see yeah but yeah it sucks but yeah he's um you know he's he's gonna be remembered though you know He's always going to be remembered for his voice acting, so. Yeah, that's just that's the really thing about being a voice actor is, like, you know, your voice, uh, you know, your work, your voice is pretty much going to be heard for a long time. I mean, almost forever. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll pretty much just live on through the, uh, through the years. I see. This is what really happens when I don't really much pay attention to anything. I feel bad. Well, it's not your fault. I mean, it wasn't like it was like wide, widespread news or anything. Like, and it's it basically was only news in like say like small, small places that you would find it probably. And even though it was kind of popular at the day it happened. Well, let's um let's give a moment of silence really quick. Sure. Fujiwara Sama, I do hope you rest in peace and that the rest of, the, of your time I will definitely look more into your roles from that time period to Kingdom Hearts and see what great work you've done. Thank you again for your help and service of our entertainment. And again, may you rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace. And now, um, on that um, um, horrible eulogy that I just did, <laughs> I, you gotta admit that that was a really that was a bad um, eulogy I just did. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's the thought that counts. Yeah. But um, other than that. Um, Let's see. Favorite movies, though. I always still want to discover a favorite movie. Hmm. <laughs> oh, you're talking about that last category. <laughs> well, that's yeah. actually not what I meant by the last category there. Like, um, <laughs> yeah, just let's talk about movie, right? But, um, yeah, I was thinking we could talk about our favorite movies next uh, on Friday if you want. Sure, we can do that. What I meant by talk about movie is, um, I actually was just gonna briefly mention like the thing I'm working on or whatever. Like, basically, what I meant is, uh, it's it's basically a personal movie that I'm working on. Like, wait, isn't it that thing you told me about with the Max and everything? Yeah, exactly. Like, basically, what it is is it's just like a movie that I'm planning on actually trying to make, and um, you know, since we're like digital artists and everything like that was one of the things i was gonna try and make uh, well like, i will eventually be a digital artist and a 2d artist <laughs> yeah like 
basically that's one of the things is what I was going to try and make over the summer is basically like an actual 3D animated movie, which is basically like, <laughs> it's essentially probably going to be like a, um, kind of like a mecha movie. Um, you know, like a giant robot movie or whatever, but, um, yeah, I was just gonna, I just figured I'd bring that up briefly and just, I guess, let everyone know that I was working on You have a general idea what to work on this? Huh? Do you have a general idea what kind of maxis will be? Well, I mean, yeah, like, I, I do have a general idea, like, they'll pretty much be, like, just, you know, like, any, like, a type of mech with, like, um... You know, like swords and stuff like that. Like, I'm not, I'm not I like, I'm not sure exactly the type, what they're gonna look like yet, because I haven't designed them yet. But like, it's only can... in like the pre-production phase right now, because I just started working on the screenplay. I can help with that if you want. Yeah, sure. Like, I'll send it over to you, and like, maybe you can give me some advice on it or something like that. Well, it's not just necessarily advice. I want to make these max kind of original. Sure. Let's yeah, see. if you want to, uh, yeah, you can definitely, like, help if you want. Let me think here. And then, yeah, of course, like, that's the other thing, too, is, like, um, you know, I'm definitely going to see if I can offer Sam here a role in, you know, doing, like, vo a voice acting part in it and everything. And, like, uh, you know, we're pretty much after the movie is, like, filmed and everything, then, you know, we're pretty much planning on actually going around and trying to find, like, some... Uh, you know, voice actors that would actually want to, um, you know, uh, be a part of the movie. We still need to animate it properly and try and get the um, realizations of what how people cry, how they smile, and stuff like that. That's going to take some work. Right. By the way, I think I might have a few ideas for a few things about these mechs. I don't know why, but ever since I remembered it, I figured we could try a more medieval design like mech mechanized suits. What do you think? That would be pretty interesting, but, I mean, the thing is, like, I kind of already started writing it, and, like, uh, I mean, basically, this is basically gonna be, like, my, uh, like, I guess my thing for now, like, I mean, it doesn't mean we couldn't work on a project together or something if you wanted to, but, like, this was pretty much, the way I started, uh, writing this right now is, like, it's basically gonna be a futuristic, like, uh, you know, mecha series, where it's, like, it takes place far in the future, but don't all Gundams, like, don't don't all mechs uh, things do that anyway? Why not try something in the past? Well, they do, but, I mean, it's it's pretty much, like, my preference right now to actually just make something in this, but... All right, well... The thing well, is, you... like, you know, I'm not planning on, like, uh, you know, copying anything. Like, I'm definitely trying to make this as, like, original as possible, even though, even though like you said, they do take place, you know, in... Uh, in space in the future or whatever. I mean, that's pretty much just a basic genre. To, hey, um, why not add fantasy creatures as pilots and humans, no? Hmm, that'd be interesting. Well, I'll, I'll figure out some of the details and then I'll uh, see what you think. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, basically, well, like, it's... um. You know, it's it, it's not like I, it probably wouldn't. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's gonna be an interesting thing to do for sure. Like, it's basically just um, like almost one giant training exercise for me as well. That would be a good idea, though. Plus, when I receive my uh, new laptop and start actually helping out with these videos, um, We'll definitely be able to make it work as much as we can. We'll, we'll definitely make this video come to life, okay? Mm -hmm. But I must warn you that we might need a. You know, we'll you know after we let's stop recording after we do the outro. Yeah. Give it like five, give it like five minutes to like cut this part out. Sure. Okay. Wait. Well, we get. I guess we just go till five if you want and uh, finish up talking about some a few things and then we'll end it. Okay. Remember, we got to mention the subscribing and everything else as well. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I think we did that way too early. It's okay. Um, you can do it more than once. It's fine. Usually we'll do it at the end. We'll know from now on. Yeah.
Okay, let's see. So, what are we gonna discuss? Okay, um, Hmm. Okay, I know what to put. Okay. So let me think. Um Mm. Huh, I guess I really am all out of topics today. Jeez. <laughs> well, um, folks, um, if you did enjoy this, um, please uh, leave a comment, or if you wish, you can subscribe if you want to. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram for the cauldrons uh, the the cauldron of interest we hope to look forward for your support and hopefully that you'll like this channel in future videos and that basically what we want to do is we want to make this channel specifically for people who want to I would dare say that people who literally just want to bring in topics, we want to help you get through tough times, even during the um, Barney surprise birthday party, and actually figure out exactly what to do next. Because this pandemic is affecting everybody, and I really do hope that our videos can help you to help you actually deal with society and to help deal with everything else in your personal lives. And also, if you like, you can also leave a comment about what your favorite topics are and what topics you want us to bring on into this channel. Exactly. We will discuss it. We will definitely try and help. If you have any animations, any video game design, or any video games or anything like that, any comics even, we will definitely discuss it. And... Mm -hmm. We will bring it into this channel and hopefully that our videos, like I said, because this is about interest and also about helping people talk stuff and helping them basically distract the fact that they have some negative um, impacts in their life. And we're simply trying to help you make it into a positive one. Mm -hmm. And if you give us a chance, we'll definitely do very much everything in our power to simply just help out as best as we can by making these podcast videos. Yep. So this is the culture of interest. I am Sam and this is Eric. Thank you very much. <laughs>